get to preach in a minute. Mm -hmm. The poem that I will be sharing with y'all is called Only at Night. Mm -hmm. Only at Night. Mm -hmm. Only at night, in the dark, when the clock strikes 12, she sinks into an amenity of deception. Like a leech, attached to the pleasure of blood, she is stuck in the battlefield of unwanted thoughts, of images of immortality, of flashbacks of defiled abuse. Like the words in the Bible, never did she realize that her mind could be so obtuse. Only at night, when the clock strikes one, what she thought what she was freed from, those fingers that creak now turns into her own temptation. Instead of being free in what she believes her, faith has been like sap from a tree, seeping into a belief of contradiction like the consolidation of a candle turned into a melting pot of fire within her heart, within her soul lies congestion from her past experience that has brought her to a present tribulation. In the darkest hour of the night, when the clock strikes 3.15, her body floats in the stream of an addiction that she never meant to dive in to begin with. Her mind drowns nightly in a pleasure for the Lord to save her body transform the blood she sheds into the blood of her savior. Only at night, the blood of her heart pumps a pulse through the tears of her eyes, strong enough to fill a wishing well with her abused love, the terror in her midnight, dreams of misconstrued reality, swimming in a wishing well filled with disdain, self-esteem of her dismantled identity that is filled with faultless accusations and persuasions of being a worthy. Yet only during the day can she pray unto her heavenly father for the strength to convert her past experiences into deliverance from this phase during the darkest hour of the night, from unsolved issues leading to another realm of addictions, formed into twisted dimensions of forces, causing her to disbelieve in the forces of religion to make a final spiritual decision, fervently praying for an awakening, an outbreak, mm -hmm. An answer through all of the pressure, a touch of only what she could feel through all of the hallucinations, a voice of only what she could hear through all of the confusion, a sign of only what she could discern. In return, she only receives the words, come and follow me, which is Jesus. Amen. 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 While I introduce myself, I'm Apostle Antoine uh, Amy. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, I spoke at the Single by the Five <coughs> Conference last night, with a, last night, Thursday, <clears throat> Friday. I'm also the author of The Totality of Deliverance. And it's clearly about my life. I come from the deep, dark lifestyle of homosexuality. A lifestyle that I feel like I did not choose. But yeah, I still chose. When you come out of the mother's womb, you're nine months years old. The enemy has already decided what he's going to challenge you with. I can remember in the book start off from being five years old of age, kindergarten, looking at young men, ready to fight over them, just to have them in my life. Just hold their hand. Enemy had already. And yet God had already sent his spirit to meet me back at home when I got home. Mm -hmm. To let me know if she was right, you was wrong. But this is where I made the choice. Mm -hmm. I know the girls were supposed to like boys. I know the boys were supposed to like girls. I like the boys. I did. But I survived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, it was, it was exactly sexual immorality and a soul tie that brought me into my deliverance. And because of what I went through, I'm here now mm -hmm. to help others come out. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that I was, what I was living was wrong. 
How do you get deliverance for something when you don't know you need to be delivered? Mm -hmm. Why are you pointing your finger at me when I can point my finger at you? This lifestyle, they turn your nose up. They push you out of the church. They school over from you. In fact, the parents put you out. Why? Well, what's different about me from you? God created me like he created you. That same Bible that says that homosexuality will not inherit the kingdom, neither will the alcoholic. Okay. <laughs> Adultery, fornication. They must have skipped that. Mm. And so when they pointed me, I was pointing back at you. <laughs> or actually, I said, just look at your thumb. You know, that's what everyone else said. And so I had got to the heart of it when I got into a deep relationship. I got into a relationship and I had got a soul tie. And if you know what a soul tie is, a soul tie, it'll break you. Yeah. It's time to break up and I'm through with him and it was meant for me. I'm through with him, I'm going home. And by the time I get home, I looked up, it was actually his door. Mm -hmm. How I get here? <laughs> I said I was through. You know, I'm mad, I'm hurt. One event had caused a whole change in my life. The guy was cheating on me with another guy. The type of person I was. I was a leader in the dark world. I led a lot of them, great big movement. Because of the nature of the lifestyle and how it consists of, your parents normally push you out. And so it's an underground lifestyle. You have mothers, you have fathers, you have brothers, you have sisters. You even had a secret society. Well, I was one of the leaders of the secret society for all over the world. Mother of the gays. Not just a few, three, four hundred this year, three, four hundred this year, Detroit, Chicago, Indiana. You name it, go in there and say it ain't me, they know who it is. That's mom. And not because of how I was feminine or, 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 or wore dressed like a woman, but it was more of because of the love that I had for them. When they got put out, I let them come in. Mm -hmm. And because of that, God allowed my grandmother to give me her huge house, 12 bedrooms, where I was able to pack all of them. You put them out. You had them, you lay down, and now you put them out. And now, guess who got them? Mm -hmm. Me. I, I took on a motherly role. It was a role that a mother takes. Don't do that, don't do this. Let me help you do this. Go to school. Go back to school, go to work, give it here, let me help you with your own work. They put them out at an early age from different states, different cities. We all cry together, we all strive together, we fall together, we didn't have a choice. The world had turned their back on us. Mm -hmm. They had let go. And so what God had did had <coughs> done was he had brought it up. And I asked him one time, I said, Why are you so good to me? And he said, Because when I was out in the street, you brought me in. Mm -hmm. The same way he said, when you get to heaven, he's going to ask you, when I was hungry, did you feed me? Mm -hmm. When I was thirsty, did you give me? Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. So even though they had this lifestyle, we had this lifestyle, we were still God's child. Mm -hmm. But the world didn't treat us like that. Mm -hmm. I would get to church, and the first thing the preacher would preach, homosexuality, homosexuality. Why does he preach a homosexuality? He looks still drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she still got on her stripper <coughs> boots, hooker boots. Mm -hmm. Um, we all know the rumor. She slept with him, and that's not her husband. Your child, your son, just had back the other way a lot. But it's still a homosexual, homosexuality. And so that kind of pushed me away from the church. But yet I went to a Baptist church. And the Baptist church, you know, they, in our, where I'm from, they don't believe in so much of the holiness. It was more of, you know, once saved, you always say, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter. You'll be all right. God loves you. Yes, he made you like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so one day when that soul tied, that guy decided he wanted to break up with me. And I believe, okay, that's fine, I'm through. And I look up, I'm back down there. And to the enemy said, kill him and that boy. Shoot. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. He said, well, wait a minute. You got two other people you need to shoot. And the type of person I was, that was not a problem for me. I had to go up to the projects. There was no problem either. They were going to push me out. You know, really, can you, your parents didn't really deal with you when you was in that lifestyle. And so my stepfather, we really didn't see eye to eye. He was a man, I understand, because of how <coughs> my lifestyle was. And so they pushed me to the projects. My father got killed when I was 12. He came here for nine months. He said, I'm coming and take care of you. And on the ninth month, he got shot in the head mm -hmm. over a 
I'd have had a way out. My grandfather was my best friend. Mm -hmm. He was about to go fishing. Went fishing one day, he gave me a whole lot of things. And, and this day, it felt so strange. You know, don't be walking around, and let me be honest, sucking on digglings and stuff. I was like, oh, granddaddy, it's too late, just give me some money. Mm -hmm. You know, follow that. Mm -hmm. Just my lifestyle, mm -hmm. that's how we are. Right. And he, you know, did what he did. He said, don't move too far, so this, this, and that. And he went fishing, and he never came back home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the closest thing. Me and my stepfather, we can get along all like that. We were good today, but back then, you know, it just wasn't. And so that pushed me out to the projects. And our projects is the projects of where we're from. I remember pulling up on my first day with a, a bag, it looked like a purse with a gun and a box of blocks, mm. bullets. And so when it comes to shooting and fighting, there was no problem. When the enemy spoke that to me, I said, OK, good. Shoot him in the head, sure. He said, but when you finish shooting those four, you must kill yourself. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and thought about it. I said, no deal. Jesus! Mm -hmm. And he said, come on, son, come on. And so I began to want to change. I was so hurt. I was so broken. I've tried everything. These guys, it's not right. And the lifestyle, you try me over and over. You do everything you can, and it just don't work. It did not work for nothing. And now I fell in love with somebody. He done broke my heart, and the enemy done told me to kill him. Mm -hmm. Why not? Kill him. Didn't kill any friend, didn't cheat with, just talking crazy, I'm going to kill you too. And the other two as well, and myself, mm -hmm. no deal. And so the Lord began to take me back to church. I went back to the church where I come from. Mm -hmm. And it's not the pastor's fault or nobody, but I got baptized, but it still wasn't enough. It was not enough. Something mm -hmm. was still missing. Mm -hmm. What is missing? Lord, I'm here. I still feel this lack, this void, and I need it to be filled. And he took me and he brought me to a holiness church. I go to an ap apostolic church. And so when he took me there and I got baptized and I wanted this thing, I wanted it. And I got filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I went out in the water. I you know, spoke in other tongues and all of that. But yet, I still get up and go to church every Sunday and he's still talking about homosexuality. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with homosexuality? Still didn't know that this was something I had to change mm. until I was going home one day. I was driving home and I said, Lord, they just keep talking about homosexuality. I don't know what's wrong with them. And he said, Antoine, you're not coming here like that. And I'm talking to them, realizing I'm hearing stuff. He said, you're not coming here like that. I said, who? I was born like this. Mm. He said, but that's why I told you, you all must be born again. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, what am I supposed to tell all of these people that believe they was born like this? Mm -hmm. He said, tell them that their lifestyle is a spirit. But the only spirit that's going to enter in here is the Holy Spirit. And I said, oh, here we go. And when I looked up, I was at a dead end where I could even go to the crossroads. And he said, the choice is yours. You all got to make it. Mm -hmm. And so from that day forward, I began to try to wonder, how do I get out of it? Why did I get picked for this? Why did I get chosen? He said, don't worry. All of their sins is that too. They all got a turn. Mm -hmm. My message is not that I'm upset at what you've done and what you did in the past, but Christ came that you can change. Mm -hmm. I understand what you did. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But turn around. Change. So then I began to wonder, okay, now how am I going to do this change? Well, then I have a, gen it's a generational curse on our family. Mm -hmm. A lot of uncles and aunts that are all dabbing in it are still messing it. And they would tell, oh, you're not going to change. God made you like that. You just better live you know, your life. We've all been through this before. It's not going to work. Don't do that. I mean, everywhere I went, all my friends, oh, that's not going to work. And to be honest, I've never seen no one else delivered out of there. No. Not yet at that time. I didn't see nobody. And I was searching, you know, going from place to place. And they all like, I don't know. And even the preachers, the pastors. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, 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 God gave you over. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So God there's no repentance. So I would go to my closet over and over and over. I'm praying. I'm trying to read my Bible. I'm trying to read my word. How do I get out of this? And I kept going to the closet. I kept going to the closet. And then I remembered what they told me about the Indians. So how do I get in contact with the Spirit? I remember they had a peace pipe. 
Mm -hmm. So you always had to fight. You know, she said, all my life I had to fight. That's how I felt. You go to school, they're looking at you funny. Go to the store, they're looking at you funny. The only thing about me is I had to fight. You know, mind. But the thing is, is that who wants to deal with that? Mm -hmm. Why can't we feel normal? I feel like I was born like this. Y'all hugged up, we hugged up, and everybody like this. <laughs> What's wrong with them? <laughs> or you look up at your picture and say fag over top of it. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, or they downtown fighting for their rights. And I, I don't mm -hmm. want to be. Why can't it just be normal? Mm -hmm. Why can't I have kids from the job? Why I can't grow up like the rest of my cousins and in jail for <laughs> murder? <laughs> <laughs> and out of 10 years. That's how bad it is. They get out of 10 years. Wow. Maybe I can just go to jail and get this over with. Mm -hmm. But no. The enemy chose this. And so no matter what he chose, our job is to get out of it. Mm -hmm. The bigger your test is, the bigger your testimony. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm fighting, I'm fighting to get out. Now I gotta get these vile passions off. Reprobate in mind. Mm -hmm. But the enemy is gonna come back and he's gonna see mm -hmm. if your house is clean. Mm -hmm. yes. And most times you're gonna fall. Mm -hmm. And when you fall, he's gonna be on you because you're gonna be a witness to Christ and God's um, healing power mm -hmm. and deliverance right here on earth. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be after you real strong. Mm -hmm. Most people can't survive it because they can't make up their mind, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. You you can't get up and go and get a drink mm -hmm. um, on Friday night and go to the club and think that that familiar spirit is not going to knock back at your door because he caught you slipping. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to come to bring you no nice, beautiful woman you know, and tell you to go lay down with him. No, he's going to bring you what you, the very thing you was delivered from. Mm -hmm. So he can go back and tell God, look, mm -hmm. remember your son? Mm -hmm. Just like he did Joseph. Mm -hmm. You know, look at this. Look what I've done. And so he began to show me the phases and the steps how to get out of it. And how I got, of it, got out of it was being a lifestyle of holiness. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to be, I'm always fasting. I'm always praying, and when they say always, the Bible means always. Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted something, go on fast. If you stumbling with something, go on fast and pray. Watch how fast he can mm -hmm. Fasting, praying, worship is a lifestyle. It's not just something you do when you need something. It's a lifestyle. You have to be committed for this one. Mm -hmm. Because when you knew him as God, you didn't glorify him as God. So when you turn around, basically you're telling him, I ain't glorify you no more. Mm -hmm. And he didn't play with this one. And Sodom, Sodom was a great example of what he how he feel about his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's one that's one that he did not wait until the end to deal with. Right. He dealt with them right then and there. Mm -hmm. He dealt with them right then and there. There's some other books that the Bible ex explain about Jashia. And, and there are some things that they explain about what went on in Sodom. I don't know if you ever read the book of Joshua, but the Bible refers to it. But they explain what went on in Sodom and how the judges, like the same way they did just allow the marriage, mm -hmm. the same way they did back then when the men come in, they had to take them to the street and have sex with them. Mm -hmm. So it's a very perverted lifestyle, but they're literally controlled with, by Satan and his, his demonic forces. They're controlled. These people here are controlled. On top of that, you have perversion, sexual perversion, just regular sexual per perversion you have to deal with. Notice that you still got to fight the regular things that everybody else got to fight with. The lust of the eye. Pride of life. Now you got to try to look, not look in the life's bulb. That's what the men do and the women do. You got to try not to look at their nipples. Mm -hmm. you, this is what the enemy is doing. So you need a total deliverance in order to come over this lifestyle. You have to know that what you're doing is not right. You have to know who you are, who created you, and you have to make sure you live in a life that's glorifying God. Because that's what he meant by when he said you didn't glorify me. Mm -hmm. you, you're supposed to glorify him with your body, your ways, and who you are. Yes. But until you go to God and you commit yourself to God, and you let him know, okay, God, I know this is wrong. Mm -hmm. I know this is wrong. This is not right. Can you lift the vow passions that you put on me because I kept thinking of things I had no business? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you thought of it, you've already done it. Mm -hmm. You've already done it. And he was particularly talking about women 
and you lust in that home. But if you're looking at a man doing it, he'll mm-hmm. probably the same thing. Same thing. And so now you're put under this spell, sort of kind mm-hmm. of speak, because you don't know why. I know I love him. I'm in love with him. And I'm like, wow, Lord, is this how I used to be? This is amazing. I used to be like this. And you can see the spirit once you've been delivered from it. You'll be able to, you can see that spirit a mile away. The first thing it does when it gives you snatch their eyebrows, change their walk, mm-hmm. raise their figure. It actually shaped their face. I actually look used to look totally different. Um, I was a totally different. I don't even know if I got it with me, but um, it, it's probably not. Okay. But um, I have a picture on my phone. I'll show it. I used to look totally different. It, it <coughs> changed you and getting you. Mm-hmm. And as I began to come deliverance, I picked up my weight on my face and everything changed. It's like you can see the enemy that left out. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can yeah. see the, the enemy that left out. Mm-hmm. And because of how everyone knew who I was, I wasn't just a little guy. I was big in the streets. I was big wherever I went. Church, whatever city, whatever state, in the worst of the worst. Detroit, the, 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 the dirty, dirty Detroit. I moved there, lived there, and ran that place. You know, the enemy was using me hard, very manipulating spirit. I really didn't have to be much uh, manipulating because you was going to do it or I had about 40 of them behind me that you should have if you didn't. Mm-hmm. And, and it just went from that to that. And God has turned it around. And he's going to do it with every one of them because the reason why the enemy put that on us is because of what God has equipped us with. Yes. God has mm-hmm. put everybody with gifts, but mm-hmm. the gifts that they have, and after you live that lifestyle, there's not too much you cannot do. That's so true. Look at all the sins he named that came with him. Mm-hmm. It's in Roman. He named so many of them, almost 30 of them. Mm-hmm. And so even when you begin to switch your lifestyle, um, you got to fight <coughs> against all 30 of these sins. The devil can throw these 30 fire mm-hmm. darts at you. We, we can deal with the, the drinking, but drinking comes with the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, this person has to fight against lying. Lying comes with the life. So you live in a lie. Mm. This one, you have to deal with smoking. It took all of this to even handle the truth. You know, you have to be drunk. You have to be high. You have to be smoking. You was definitely under sexual perversion. Which sin was you not in? You had to steal. They wouldn't bring it to you. Mm-hmm. you. And if you wasn't stealing, you were stealing somebody else's identity. Mm-hmm. You know, my job was to turn you out. I didn't want no gay guy. I was <coughs> you the hardest. Toughest, roughest guy, and when you come back, you're gonna, your mouth is going to follow. That's why I was. That's, that's that spirit. Mm-hmm. That enemy gets in, and, he, and they let him in, he changes. And it's ruthless, and they allow him to say, No, they're not. Oh, mm-hmm. they're so soft. That ain't what God said He put in. Mm-hmm. He said, I made him like this. I made you like this. I put, turned you over to this. Excuse me. I turned you over to these things. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Then you call him the Bible lie. Mm-hmm. It's not a lie. It's, you're lying now. Mm-hmm. You're living a lie. Mm-hmm. And so God began to uh, um, explain to me how wicked I was. Then he goes on to say that they were just not, as Genesis, uh, but they were just not um, sinful because a lot of people say, well, all sins are the same. Mm-hmm. Even with that, they said, John said, even um, some sins are leading to death. Mm-hmm. But God didn't say that this one was a sin. He said in Sodom they were wicked and sinful. Mm-hmm. That's not the same. Mm-hmm. Wicked and sinful. Mm-hmm. That those are some devices that the enemy can use to turn some things out. Mm-hmm. When we were supposed to be living testimonies for God, for Christ, you know, a transformation is supposed mm-hmm. to come on. When you begin to try to transform this, the enemy's great fight with you. And most people don't want to fight. But when you was in the lifestyle, you fought for everything you needed. You fought for all your life. And as soon as you get with God, you get one person disrespecting you. You're like, you have one bad dream. And the enemy, he show up. Well, since I've done this, I've done some things that most people look at me like I'm crazy. They really do. When it comes to the secret society, we have a secret society. It's, it's still big. It's huge. All over the world, but it's underground. Right here in Florida. Probably 400 of them a weekend when they're, when they're there. 500. Depends on how big the club is. And it still goes on to this day. In fact, I made these arrangements to get here this weekend about three months ago and didn't know that they had arrangements there this weekend there in Indiana. Mm-hmm. Didn't even know they had it. 
<laughs> but the, when I began to teach this stuff and when I get through, the enemy will show up. I, he actually showed up to my room with the ugliest horns, the ugliest look. You begin to fight with him. Mm -hmm. And I intercede. Uh, if I if there's something that I lay my hands on and touch, I go to sleep at night, I'll fight with And it's because it's something that God had already told Jeremiah, I knew you mm -hmm. before the womb. Because the enemy knew what he was going to put on you. That's why he made it so hard for you to get out of this. But if you really try to get out of this, it's going to be a lifestyle of commitment to God. You're not going to be able to look to the left. You're not going to be able to look to the right. You're not going to be able to make no U-turns. And you definitely ain't going to be able to turn around. Most of my friends that started this with me, all of them have quit. Every one of them. This makes my seventh year. Amen. Thank you. Amen. They all turn around and left. But what's so unique about each one of them is God has given each one of them not a dream, but took them on a trip to hell. Wow. Took them on a trip. They could sit here and tell you what it looks like in hell. Mm -hmm. But they can't get out. Mm -hmm. They cannot let go. And he said, is this what you want? They all tell me the same thing. They don't know each other. Mm -hmm. So they can't say it. Mm -hmm. And I just listen like, wow. Mm -hmm. He really took them to hell. Jesus. Brother, I went on this train ride. Train ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't going on a train ride. I had this dream where I was at a cross world. And when I got there, it wasn't the person that I was expecting. Mm -hmm. What you think that was? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what it was exactly what it was. It was not the person he was expecting. Mm -hmm. You can't live any kind of way. Mm -hmm. And so he began to teach me this. And as he began to take me, and it's not an overnight, this is a process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, you didn't just give yourself over and live a sinful life. When you live in homosexuality and lesbianism, you have sold your soul. Mm -hmm. That's why you can't get out of the days. You sold your soul. Mm -hmm. I think that's your question sure. too, because um, and I wanted the scripture that you mm -hmm. had referred to in Romans. Mm -hmm. I believe for mm -hmm. me in that era where I was at, it was easier then than it is now because this is an end time spirit now. That's why it's so hard with sexual perversion because we're at the very very end, mm -hmm. and so it's almost like the last call mm -hmm. to board a plane or a train to get out of here. <coughs> Because when I was seeking God about getting free, he asked me, are you ready? Wow. That was his, wow. you know, and I said, ready for what, you mm -hmm. know? And then his re response was ready for the coming of the Lord. It came on the radio. It was mm -hmm. an actual WTMP. He had a, how many of y'all remember the, the uh, gospel classic hour? Mm -hmm. It used to come on with the song mm -hmm. where he was playing that song, ready? Are you, Are you ready? ready? You remember ready. that, right? So I'm waking up, mm -hmm. and this was what came on the radio because I had my alarm set to this, and that song came on. I was so scared, I sat straight up in the bed yeah. because I knew it was God. How coincidental was that going to be? So I got re received an extension, and I, it, it, he extended an invitation to me. Are you ready? And then I started thinking about, no, I know I'm not ready because I'm still <laughs> doing this stuff that I know I don't want nobody to know about. I was totally incognito, and I was in the church. You know, I was singing in the choir. I was teaching Sunday school. You know, um, no secretary for the Sunday school. Mm -hmm. You know, and doing all of these things. I wasn't married. I was still in high school, but it was somewhat the door for deliverance was open then because the times are not like they are now. Mm -hmm. You know, and just like the Bible says, in the last days, men will not endure sound doctrine. doctrine. You know, see that thing is lifting, mm -hmm. and so. When you said Romans, the, that chapter you said where it says so many different sins in there, we talked about the 17 works of the flesh mm -hmm. and how we have to make sure ourselves that we're not, like you said earlier, we're not under spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, what was that scripture that you did? And can you go a little bit further into it? I was trying to find it when you um, referred sure. to it. That's the Romans. Romans 1 is the last chapter in Romans. Oh, one. Actually, it's the last two verses. I think it started at 28. 28, 28, 28 Romans 1. Yeah, 1. It starts talking about all those. And it's all this. It's all of them, the last one. Okay. okay. And, it explain, and it just simply explains what he's trying to say is every sin, basically, that's out here that most people are fighting is all at once. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. With this one. That's what he's saying in the show. Kind of going to that. You, you are okay. all fighting. You're fighting. What everybody else was saying is using against one, this alcoholic. Yes, everybody has different okay. sins to climb out of. But this one has to fight out of all of this. Uh-huh. <coughs> and they go, well, you're not being fair. You're being judgmental. You're not, I, I'm just for you to work. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm just exclu- exclusively reading you to work. And it does begin right there at 29. Uh-huh. Being filled with all unrighteousness. He said, all unrighteousness. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not some, mm-hmm. not a little. Mm-hmm. All, all me, A L L means all. Mm-hmm. So everything <coughs> is not right. You feel it. Mm-hmm. I was filled with it. I know they feel with it. You might not feel like you feel or you feel with it because that's the enemy's trick. Mm-hmm. And first of all, you don't know what's right and what's wrong because your heart is darkened. Mm-hmm. So you proclaim to be wise. So you don't have the answer to that. You thought you was right, but you was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I became, I can read this one, you can read, mm-hmm. read them. Uh, fornication, wickedness, covetous, malice, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malice and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of that, not only do the same thing, but have pleasures in them that do them. When you see them, they go, oh, that's family right there. <coughs> that's family. <coughs> All of these things he said is in them. Mm-hmm. Homosexuals and lesbians. This scripture is particularly wrote about that. Romans 1. Mm-hmm. Literally said. Woman changed to natural use and mm-hmm. likewise. Mm-hmm. And so the thing that had began to change me was that every night I meet with God in that praying prayer closet. 12 o'clock. Amen. Every night. Amen. Amen. Every night. I told them at the um, conference, a lot of the women were trying to throw themselves, and I can see the bad passion. Well, mm-hmm. first of all, God gave me a dream over the city. And so the city is full of bad passion, starting with the leaders on down, mm-hmm. all the way down. Yeah. And so once you open up a portal, mm-hmm. they can come in. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened in our country and all over the world is Paris Times, mm-hmm. the end of the world. And he's using some of his most wickedest devices. Mm-hmm. God still loves the sinner. Mm-hmm. He doesn't love the mm-hmm. sin. Mm-hmm. The wickedness has definitely got to go. But the thing about this is that this really still is not to us. It's still about God and, and Satan. It's mm-hmm. fighting still in him. Right. And he's using the things that he God done by. The detestable mm-hmm. thing. God calls us a detestable thing. He uses all of this against it. But the very thing that you, our ultimate goal is to get into heaven, get into the kingdom. It doesn't matter. Whatever it takes. Most people ask me, what's my drive? My drive is to walk through those gates. That's my first drive. The second drive is to go back and strengthen my brother. Go back and help others out. And I'm a hairstylist. I did medical assistant. I'm an early educator. I did a lot of things. And so what I do now is he sends them to my chair. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. at least four or five young men and women I take to the water month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every month. And it opens up the eyes. And, and the most people say, well, how are you doing this? How are you doing How are you doing It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. You have to allow God to use you. You become a living testimony. Mm-hmm. And if you're a living testimony, you'll have fruit. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You're alive. Mm-hmm. First thing I noticed when I got here was a lot of the trees was dead. Mm-hmm. I said, uh-oh, mm-hmm. we in trouble. I picked the floor that was beautiful green. <laughs> and they said, well, the sun cooked it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, the rain, much as it rained, it shouldn't be able to cook that much. Right. Boiling water. Uh-huh. But your trees show your fruit you have, and you should be bearing fruit. And so most people are asking, and then I get into what they do for a living, and I notice everybody loves titles. Mm-hmm. Everybody's an apostle, Jesus. but it's the title of missing. I'm an apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophetess. I'm a, I'm a bishop. I'm this. I'm a that. But no evangelist. That's the number one creed. You're supposed to be out witnessing, telling people about Jesus. But he, the biggest of my testimony is I normally get a lot of thugs because I, I ran a game. That's what that was. It was a game. 
And so I get a lot of the projects, I get a lot of the gang guys, the guys that you would never believe. Or he has sent me to <coughs> groups of false prophets and all of that because I can hear clearly. Mm -hmm. you know, now, now that all of that is, rain is gone, mm -hmm. now I can hear and see him because you have to live a lifestyle of complete holiness. Mm -hmm. If not, the enemy got so many different mm -hmm. things to throw towards you. Mm -hmm. All of them, he's going to throw them. The fiery darts, of, they're going to come. The moment you quit, <coughs> it's over. He snatched you in. Right. I had a prophetess call and tell me a couple of years ago, the moment you quit, the moment you quit, God's not going to let you go. Satan's not going to let you go. Come on, come on. Not going to let you go. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I had felt like that was because everybody that I had started with quit. Mm -hmm. And then I noticed that one, when he got married to a man, another one changed his religion. Another one just gave back, took get back to the world, and and the thing about living this lifestyle is so, it's so scary. There's so many diseases. There's so many mm -hmm. um, bullets. There's so many death. There's no life in it, and you're miserable. What you don't know is that they are miserable. You're miserable. That's why gay means happy, but homosexual means two in the same sex. That's why you're trying to be happy. Mm -hmm. You're gay. Gay means happy. And you, you're trying to be happy because you really don't like what's on the inside. Mm -hmm. And it's there. And you didn't put it there. Some of us did. My testimony isn't, I got raped. I didn't get raped. Mm -hmm. Rape might be one thing, but still a choice. You got to choose after that. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes, a lot of people get raped. Mm -hmm. And definitely, if you wasn't like that, that would push me further away. But that's my, you know, my thought of my opinion. Um, but I think Satan uses that as a portal to slide that through mm -hmm. on you. Notice it's one of the worst sins in the world. It's one of the worst. It's the only one. It's not the only one, but it's one of the worst ones. Because perverseness is not only on homosexuality. It comes with bestiality. If women does it. When, mm -hmm. when you, anytime you got to go in your room, even when you're married, mm -hmm. if you got to go in there, and I told them earlier, and swing around the chandelier, and you got to play a circus show, you have a vow passion. Mm -hmm. When he gave me a dream about um, a debate that I had here with some of the ministers here, mm -hmm. he let me know that when they enter into their bedroom, mm -hmm. that there is a sex demon in there mm -hmm. already when they get there. Mm -hmm. Because of their mm -hmm. beliefs. Mm -hmm. you, you, certain things are just not made for certain things. My book explained that too. Toys and, and uh, other mm -hmm. parts. You know, it's like using your ear, your knees. I, I put that in there to hear with. It wasn't made for that. And why would you put anything in your mouth besides food or maybe a breast? Why, why would you want to do anything? Everything else is for waste. Mm -hmm. And most of the ministers disagree with that here. <laughs> And I'm only exposing it so that you guys can know how to pray for the city here. Because if the leaders don't do that, and then it's going to trickle down. If they don't carry themselves, when you become like Christ, you are a Christian, you are like Christ. Mm -hmm. You carry yourself, and I believe they should bring them bracelets back, WWJD. <laughs> <laughs> because the lady asked me at the conference when I told her this, we can't do that in the bedroom. Well, how should we conduct ourselves? I said, as if Jesus was sitting beside you. Then what would you do? Would you turn around and eat all that? That's what they told me. Would you do that if he was sitting there? Would you do that? And I'm only saying this. I know it's kids in here, but it's reality. We all started early. I mean, you was married when you had your first kids. And the enemy, he tries that, but now he has times that times three. Mm -hmm. He done took that from men and women to men and men, women and women early. Mm -hmm. I got so many young guys that's hitting my age up 12 and 13. They don't even know why they're hitting it up. And I can't wait to get to them. 12 and 13 years old. Long hair, mustache, just beard, gray, get shot in the head in our city. They're not going to play that. It's illegal to carry gun. And the thing is, is that the enemy knows this. It's a trick. He, his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. So if they feel like they're trying to live this, the first thing you need to let them know is that the enemy is trying to kill, steal, or destroy. There's something about you that he wants out of you. Why did he put this on you? Now, I was born like that. Well, if you was born like that, then I tell you, he didn't do it against the enemy. And the enemy is only here to steal, kill, and destroy. What is it that he's trying to take? 
What is it that he's trying to kill? Why is he trying to destroy you? He used everything he could to try to stop me from being here in this situation where I'm at now. Everything. And I'm not talking about getting here. God already knew this from the beginning. He saw this. Somehow he got a glimpse of it because he started early and he put that. But what he didn't know was that God do have some people that would change. They will stand up for him and turn around. Mm -hmm. So to help the young kids, because I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a role model. We never had a meeting like this. When we went to the doctor, my mother would say, look in the mirror, tell me what you see. Oh, I don't know what I see, what you see. Mm -hmm. Put that joint down. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that happened. And that's the first thing they did in silence. Don't judge us, handle us, him, handle us them, mm -hmm. or we gonna do you like we gonna do him. It's gonna be worse. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing they say from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing the defense mode pop up, and that's the trick of the enemy. First thing from the beginning in the garden. I didn't do that. She did that. Mm -hmm. No, he he told me to do it. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, you turn around, point the finger. You can always tell where the enemy is. He don't want to take the blame. Mm -hmm. Set you up to take you out, and you turn around and leave. Had me believing that what I was doing was right. I thought I was going to heaven, me and my boyfriend. You couldn't tell me nothing different. You, you couldn't tell me nothing different. Why was what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Every other sin is wrong too. And so now I begin to live a life of prayer, fasting, worshiping, witnessing. I'm always at church. The Bible said Jesus had a habit of being at the synagogue. Mm -hmm. Always there. I'm always around the saints. You have to remove yourself. I'm not going to listen to your music. I'll be there. If I have to be there with you, you best believe I'm blocking it out. Because mm -hmm. you have to stay away from memories. Come on. Yeah. You got. You cannot go down the same road that you was with your friends. You have to let most of your friends go. Mm -hmm. A lot of family members. Then you have to go down, stay away from the uh, memory lane. Mm -hmm. When you go take a trip down there, you look back up and you stand there and say, I can see him just as clear. He's, yeah, you like that? Mm -hmm. You can think of something and he and it's like he did right on it. Mm -hmm. And God allows it because once again, you're not glorifying him. Mm -hmm. You let him know, oh, I'm not going to give you the glory today. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I, I got a leash. You know, Satan is on a leash. Mm -hmm. not loose. Mm -hmm. He go get permission. Mm -hmm. He's not loose. Oh, he's loose. Mm -hmm. oh, he ain't that loose. Mm -hmm. This is still God's world. That's right. Mm -hmm. You gave him permission to be loose that's by what right. you're doing. That's and so God is like, remember, this is this is free, free will. Mm -hmm. And so if you stay with me, I got you. Mm -hmm. But if you turn on me, remember, <laughs> I never leave you. You turn your back on me. Yes. So even if it's for ten minutes. Only take a half of a millisecond for a bullet to go through. Exactly. Remember the devil trying to take you out. And so he's using each one of these tactics to go after um, a world like this. So perverse and so dark. That's what he's doing. And he's using homosexuality, lesbianism. And now he's getting marriage, which is really not sacred. I mean, he, he's, this is a big distraction if you ask me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It definitely opened up the portal, mm -hmm. you know, for him to come through. It's not right. I totally disagree. But it's a distraction. Mm -hmm. Because that really doesn't count. God ain't even on them. <coughs> He's waiting for them to come and say, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm, I need to get prepared. Can you right. help me get ready for your return? Mm -hmm. What he's doing is he's using kind of all these distractions from the saints because really we need to get ourselves together. Mm -hmm. Right. We need to be trying. Once we get ourselves together and be better role models, yeah. then we can help others out. Yes. There was no one to tell me what I was doing was wrong. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Everybody I went to that lived this lifestyle told me that you was born like that. Mm -hmm. well, God said I would. Oh, you should probably hide. Go smoke a blunt here. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the very things that you quit doing, it's free. Mm -hmm. I quit smoking because the enemy have to use this stuff to saturate mm -hmm. your mind. I tried killing myself, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. I sat in the bathtub and all over um, um, Soul Ties. Mm -hmm. Got myself in the bathtub, I set the CD player in there spinning. All my friends laughing. Put the dryer in there, it's blowing bubbles. Oh my oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> they all yeah. sitting there like, take a picture. <laughs> That's how <laughs> wicked we <laughs> Wow. Just, just think Lord. about what's, what was supposed to happen. They all yeah. sitting there watching. Let us see. That's wicked. Yeah. And I'm doing it over a man. Wow. 
I'm gonna highlight this. <laughs> <laughs> it's just blowing bubbles. So you probably like, what's wrong with electricity? <laughs> God, like, no, not that one. Uh, not that one. And that was going to bruise your head. <laughs> and so, if you have anybody that's stuck in this lifestyle, don't blame them so much. They need to fast and pray to have bio passions removed out of them. First, they need to get their their heart in darkness yeah. because right now they're seeing everything from the dark side. Mm-hmm. Even I could talk like this, and it can be a room of them. And long as their heart is dark, and they're gonna be sitting there in mm-hmm. their mind, I've been there. Mm-hmm. The same will be speaking to their mind. Look at it. Look at me, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, look real. Look at that. No, no, no. I don't believe it. I want to wait. And that's just how wicked he is. Mm-hmm. Until you let God know, I want this off of me. And then God began to put his eye on. He got his eye on you. Mm-hmm. But he began to put his eye on the things that you want off. Mm-hmm. And so when you say, Lord, why do I keep this eye on God? Why do I keep sitting here thinking nasty stuff? Mm-hmm. I'm in church. I'm sitting here reading my Bible. I looked up and I haven't seen a flash of a sex scene. Look, mm-hmm. this does it. What's going on? God said, are you ready? Mm-hmm. I said, okay. And so he began mm-hmm. to lift that up. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. We can't do it. You got her a lot of preaching. Go ahead and lay your hands and cast that spirit out. Mm-hmm. Cast that spirit out. You're going to cast that spirit out. You're going to cast out something God said I turned you over to. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I tell them when they say, no, you just don't. The deliverance ain't working. I, I said that the deliverance people at church. But you ain't going to deliver something that God said I turned them over to. Mm-hmm. He's going to have to make up in his mind to live right. He's going to have to make up in his mind to do the right thing. He's going to have to tell God that I want this off of me. Light in my eye. And darkness just lets you know that Jesus is light. So you're missing somebody. You're missing the gateway to God in the first place. you got to come through Christ. And it's no darkness in him. The Bible says it's no darkness. And so the first thing they have to do is you have to pray and fast that he add light to their heart. They need to get a better one-on-one walk with Christ. Then you have to fast and pray to remove bad passions. Because even though I had got uh, baptized, I spoke in tongues, I'm still nasty thoughts still coming. In. Why don't I feel like this lifestyle is wrong with He once he revealed it to me what it was and had me to pray and fast to get bad passions off, then I was able to go forth. And then it stopped the reprobated mind. God can still remove the reprobated mind. He's a loving God. He's, he's a God of another chance. But he's basically the word is letting you know this is the state that you're in. Mm-hmm. Most people say, well, how do you get there? We don't know what it means. What he was doing was showing you what it is that they're under, how they got there, and why you can't get them out. Mm-hmm. And if you want them out, and if they want to get from there, send them to me. Mm-hmm. A one-on-one. A lifestyle of holiness. You, mm-hmm. you live the lifestyle of wickedness, and I want you to do it. Four, three, six, six. Mm-hmm. And now it's time to live holiness. And then he's going to send you back out to go and, and tear some people around because you turn some people out. Because he said at the end that you agree with the other ones. He said you, you agree, you, you, you were proud of it. And so my book goes into details. He gave me stages and steps how to get out. And I got the phases that it takes to get out of there. I got my life story in there. And it's absolutely amazing. The Holy Spirit, as I wrote this book, I typed the first part, then the second the second part of the phases, the Holy Spirit talked while I typed. Um, he sent angels to come and deliver me messages, put in there, dreams, mm-hmm. visions. Oh, wow. It's an amazing book. Mm-hmm. Then on top of the book, he stamped it with his, his approval. The first thing he did was he put his image in the center of it. Supernaturally, I didn't put that image on that. He put that image on that. Good evening. You Yeah, he stamped it with his supernatural um, image on here because of the work that it took to do it. It took a lot. I 
didn't bring my poster, but he did. Um, I got a picture of it, and I have to show him one by one. Okay. But he did, inside of the fire, there's a creature, the reason why I have eyes on the thing. There's a creature in the prophet Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Isaiah, and John the Revelator. Mm -hmm. And in Ezekiel saw the wheel, there was a creature, and there was a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Mm -hmm. And everywhere the throne that set up there went, there was a spirit that followed it. Mm -hmm. And it had a face of a lion on the right, a face of an ox on the left, mm -hmm. an eagle behind, and a man face on the front. Mm -hmm. That was in the fire. But he put that on there. He gave that to them because they were sent to a rebellious group of people. Mm -hmm. Same way we mm -hmm. sent to a rebellious group of people. He said that you know what's right and what's wrong. Just like when I was five years old in kindergarten, mm -hmm. he came and told me that I was wrong about that little girl. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. he, oh, he came and told me that I was wrong about that little girl, the Holy Spirit. He's already then convicted us and told us we was wrong. Mm -hmm. But how, we didn't never take the time to find out how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. We didn't find out our real purpose for being alive. Mm -hmm. We just lived. And we knew that it went against God's freedom. So it becomes a life of prayer and fasting and commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. The totality of deliverance. I was going to say, yeah. too, um, because it's like for myself, when I was sharing with you all my testimony earlier, when the Holy Spirit was letting me know that you know you can't be fruitful and multiply, you can't reproduce yourself because of what you're doing, I knew that. Mm -hmm. And if I had continued to make excuses because my flesh enjoyed what it was doing, I would not be where I am today. I would be giving away, giving up for vile passions, giving up to the reprobate mind. And but because I said yes to God because I wanted a future. I wanted a husband. I wanted children. And I wanted more than anything else what the will of God was for my life. And I knew that what I was involved in was not what he ordained for my life. And so because I said yes to him and then Everything, like when you were saying that God sent you back, now that you've been converted, you go and you restore your brother. It's not strange to me now that God will have a women's ministry mm -hmm. that he, you know, ordained that I have, that I'm over. And so God knows that there's a purpose in all of our lives. Mm -hmm. And in this season, I believe that God wants us to make full proof of our ministry. What are we really called to do? Mm -hmm. Where have we really been in our lives? What have we experienced? Because in this day and age, we can't just go and sit on a pew. We That's can't right. just go and attend church. We got to be about our father's business. God, why did you let me go and be in a relationship with other women? Where does that fit right now where I am? Why did you allow for me to have this experience over here? Where does that play out with what you want with me now? Because he never, ever allows us to do something and it's just wasted. Right, you know, right, it's right. not anything a waste in God. Mm -hmm. If he ordered it, it was required for who we are and what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. And so just, you know, wanted to just thank everybody, you know, for coming. If, and if you have anything else you want to pose, if they have any questions or if you have any comments at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, I have um, a close family member who is in the lifestyle. And at first my sister didn't agree with it. But she will allow him and his lover to lay up in her house. And I don't agree with it. I don't address the, the young man as his boyfriend. I never do. You know, I always address him as, you know, who he is, is by his name. But it always bothers me because I'm like, why are you allowing this? But I think she has fear to where she don't want him to be out there in the streets. Mm -hmm. And then fearful <clears throat> about what would happen to him if he, you know, something happened to him out in the street. So mm -hmm. what I would like to know is, you know, I have shared the word, word with my nephew, it's my nephew actually, and I have shared the word with my nephew and, you know, he would say the same thing, I was born like this, mm -hmm. you know, and at first, it, you know, he was like that, but I also remember my sister speaking that over him when he was little. She's and she used to be like, your gay self, your gay, you know, and then wow. he, he, yeah, she used oh to speak, speak that over him, I remember as a little boy. Um, and then now he is that way, 
and then now he just every it seems like a little bit more mm-hmm. he comes now he's wearing makeup you know I mean full Mac you know when he goes out and everything and I love him and I know that he knows deep down that it's wrong but it's like he knows it's wrong but then again and the other flip side he feels as though it is something that is you know he was born that way mm-hmm. and no matter how much me and him has almost got into debates to where I have to pull back yeah. because I you know I'm not going to argue with you over the word of God but also I don't feel comfortable I don't want to say being around him because I love my nephew and I do enjoy being around him but I do not wish to entertain that lifestyle and look like I'm condoning the fact of what she allows that goes on in her house. Now, him and the um, young boy broke up, but it's like a off and on relationship, you know? So sometimes they be together, sometimes they don't be together, and, you know, right now he's not, you know, with him, but it is allowed. It was allowed in the house, and I, and I asked her, I was like, why did you, why do you allow this? And she's like, oh yeah, I know it's wrong, but, you know, I know, I know. She always say, I know, I know, but don't do anything about it. But me, I want to know, because we generally go over there pretty often, and, you know, I don't want to ostracize him. You know, that's not the right way of going about it either. So I'm just trying to figure out what is the right way, because I'm noticing that that generation, because he's like 20, 23. So 23, downward. Mm -hmm. I can name at least about 10 Mm -hmm. in my family Mm -hmm. that that is out. Mm-hmm. And I mean living, girls and boys. Mm-hmm. You know, I have another cousin that lived in the women, like a woman as well. So, and it's from downward. And he's 30, so I would say 30 on down. Some live undercover still, like we don't know. Mm-hmm. Some still live undercover, and then some are majority out. But it's a lot of them in my family. Wow. It's the generational curve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he does feel born like that, because when he came out, he was like that. Mm-hmm. I definitely recommend him the book because that's where to start with when I was a baby and mm-hmm. I was a child. I disagree with her putting him out because of his lifestyle. She that's still, she that's still her stuff. Right. Um, I had my boyfriend actually live with me as well with my mother. Mm-hmm. Once I got older, I had paid. Um, well, I worked. I worked real good. Paid almost four thousand dollars to have a bedroom built in the basement. But it's still your child. And people like him, because of the love that she has for him, he will be one that will be able to make it out. He will be able. Because the first thing that happens is everybody turn your back on. Mm-hmm. And it's still your child. Mm-hmm. And even though he has this born, he don't understand why he's born with this. And uh, why he has this pool and why he's in a relationship with another guy. Should you put him out and abandon his lifestyle? That's why the majority of them kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Because of you judging him because of his life. Mm-hmm. Did you tell her though about her daughter, her boyfriend standing? See, he don't know this. You know the word, but he don't know the why I feel like this. Mm-hmm. He told you why. He told you he felt like he was born like mm-hmm. this. Which he probably did come out like that. I, I explained that myself. Mm-hmm. And the, where most parents go wrong is they push them out. And the streets grab them. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Is push them out. And if you don't, the, the very thing they're going to do is be extremely mir- uh, miserable. Because you don't know the word. If you really knew the word, you knew how to help them out of it. Mm. But if you knew, and it's your child. So what she should have been doing is going and finding help as much as possible um, from, you know, deeper places. This is not a good and a quick, easy issue that you can just mm-hmm. handle at church, go to church, and they pray and it's delivered. This is not that kind. Mm-hmm. You have to go and get help for this one. As you can see, he's been, you said he's woke up and he's, you've been talking to him over and over mm-hmm. and it doesn't work. You know, most, most times you talk to somebody, um, I just talk to a few people a couple of times, you catch on. But after you didn't talk over and over, you said he's 30 or 23, he's 23. Mm-hmm. 23 years old, and he still haven't caught on. He feel like he was born. He's been fighting with this over and over. And now his life is going to be miserable. Add um, balance to that because 
when we was looking at Romans um, 1 um, and all of the 17 works of the flesh, mm -hmm. and you said something that really was powerful for people that are in leadership that are now called to minister to people like that. They need to help everybody to understand that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we got these vile passions inside of us. It's just like what you said earlier. When God brings it to our attention, we're not ready to deal with it. We make excuses, but when, when, whenever we say, well, when you got saved, you got the Holy Ghost, and then you say, well, God, you in the Bible reading it, and you get this nasty thought, and you say, God, why would this God say, okay, I got your attention. Now you ready to give that up? Right. As he brings it to your attention, mm -hmm. and see, we think because we say, we like, the blood of Jesus. Oh. No. <laughs> no, that's in there because you were born in sin, shaping in iniquity, and just like we have these thoughts that come in our mind that are not like God, and we don't cast them down, and then when God show us, okay, you know you just thought that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you just saw that shadow just came through your head. Now, I know, are you going to acknowledge that? Okay, leave it, and guess what's going to happen? Right. There's going to be an addition to that. Every time you excuse it away and act mm -hmm. like it didn't happen, right? you know, right. you know you just had a thought to do something you ain't had no business doing. Okay, um, for example, and I'll be straight up honest, for women, you know you just had a thought to touch yourself. Right. No, you didn't follow through with it, mm -hmm. but guess what? There's a scripture in the Bible that say, they come past me about, yea, they come past me about, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. That's talking about your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't catch them the first time, it's coming back around. Mm -hmm. Give it some time. But until you acknowledge that thought and say, uh-uh, I refute, no, mm -hmm. you're not going to come up in my head. You trespass. Mm -hmm. You have to tell mm -hmm. those thoughts. You shall not build a case up in my head. This is a, you, you will not dwell in the mountain of the That's Lord. Right. This is the mountain of God That's because right. it's the highest part of your head. Right. That's high. Mm -hmm. That's what God feeds you and come down and he ascends upon your head. You know, thou knowest my head with oil. So if you're getting thoughts that are not like God and you're not casting them out, and casting them down, that's when the enemy says, I'm just wait. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give about three more. How many hits do you think you're going to take to the head before you actually perform what keep coming? If it don't come one way, okay, then you're going to get a television commercial. Then you're going to get it in a song. Then you might be at work and somebody might be talking about their little nasty episode they had over the weekend. Mm -hmm. All this stuff keep mm -hmm. building up, building up, building up, building up, building up. After a while, you're going to be inundated. Yeah. Then when you get by yourself, yeah. here it comes. Yep. Yeah, coming in. Mm -hmm. And he got a good old strong and then you lay in there asleep, unguarded. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then after a while, while you unguarded, mm -hmm. you done had your episode, don't even know how to know what happened. Yeah. But you have no one to teach that. That's, That's right. what I'm talking about. What miss we're missing it in the church. So if we're not gonna do it in the church, that's why as often as God give me strength and give an opportunity, I will be right here. You have to be talking because that's how we lose in the church. That's how we lose in it. The battle in the church. If I can answer your question, because the, the church uh, pastors, leaders, people in church, to answer that question about putting them out and loving them, uh, I've been a pastor for 23 years. I had my knee baby, my third daughter, she moved here and graduated high school with me. When she graduated, she was 18. To me, 18, you're grown. Now, I'm a pastor. I've already been pastoring about 13, 16 years maybe already. Uh, I brought her a car, Mercedes, gave her, you know, she was a good kid, straight A student, all of that. So I gave her liberty that my mother gave me. But my mother wasn't safe. But also, me being a pastor, I wasn't where I am now with my relationship with God mm -hmm. and sin mm -hmm. because I was a pastor in sin and sinking. Mm -hmm. I was separated, married, but had a girlfriend mm -hmm. and I was sleeping with her. Mm -hmm. So my daughter gets here now. She's grown, got her own car, got my bank accounts. She's doing great. She ain't doing nothing crazy. She ain't partying. She ain't none of that. She chose to do, she graduated early. So she said, daddy, I'm going to get a career. I can start a business till I go to college. So she's a good kid, but she starts dating. Now, I don't want my baby away from me. I let her boyfriend stay all night, just me and her. Well, baby, I don't want you driving all the way back in the city because we lived in New Tampa. He lived in the city, in the hood. I want you so he could just stay all night. Now, she 18. I ain't saying leave your door open. He can sleep, you sleep here, they sleep there. So they're probably sleeping together because eventually they move together. But this is a pastor, right? 
Now, my daughter is grown, she has a baby, she's not married. My other daughters are grown and married and have children. If my married daughters come in my house now, they can sleep in a room with their husbands. If my unmarried daughter comes with her baby father, can't sleep in a room with her. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking about standards. Mm -hmm. If we, the church and leaders, don't raise standards, mm -hmm. then how are you going to do it? You have to show somebody. So for the son that's in that lifestyle, that's my son, that's my baby, I love him. That's my nephew, this is like my son. We have the same blood. Mm -hmm. He's an Amy, I'm an Amy. That's my surname. I just have my mother's maiden name. <coughs> but my, my child, I will love through it. Can they do it in my house? Mm -hmm. Not, no, hell no. Mm -hmm. You can't you do it in my house. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do it, that's hell. And I mean, hell, no, <laughs> not in my house, not hell in the negative, but hell is negative, period. But you can't bring that in my house. Mm -hmm. Are you put out? No, you're not put out. Because I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to love you. This is your home. Mm -hmm. You stay here, baby. Whatever you do on the street, you do. And believe it or not, you said you pray for them, you talk to them, and they broke up. You think your seeds ain't working. Mm -hmm. You keep praying, you keep talking. I was praying for my nephew and didn't know I was praying for him. When I started Men on the Mission and the Movement for God, it was to restore the generational curse. We have a death curse on our family. Mm -hmm. From his grandfather, my father, four of our brothers, four, three of his uncles, one of my brothers shot to death. His dad, age of 31. I'm the only one lived past, I'm the only one on my mother's side lived past the age of 31. Three of his uncles killed before they seen 32. Because of our father, his grandfather, and the sins passed down. My father left a lot of body bags, didn't he? From the business he was in, nasty business. So that generational curse of death hit our family any way it could. Now watch this, like I explained to my nephew, Satan's plan to kill off God's army is so divisive and is just nasty. Mm -hmm. If he can get, if he can't get the pastors and the preachers and the elders and stuff, okay, let me get the babies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let me pervert the natural use of them. Mm -hmm. And let them never mate. Mm -hmm. Where the new army gonna be born at? Yes. If the baby said, if the Bible said raise up a child in the way it should go, he was raised in church. Mm -hmm. So when his time came, where is he at? on the army for God. But had he stayed there, he would never produce kids. Had Leola stayed there with none, every one of Leola's kids is in ministry and does ministry with excellency. Every one, well, most of them, right? With excellency. The family does ministry with excellency. Had she stayed there, we would have never had a dancer like Faith. We'd never have a minister like Stephen or like uh, uh, Junior, Elder Till, MB3. We would never have ministry like that in our youth had she stayed in. So Satan's device to perverse God's natural use. I have a question. Um, working in the school system, one of the things that disturbs me is when I see children, girls, dress like boys. Yes. Now understand something. I'm talking about elementary middle school, not so much as the high school yet, because high school is age 16, you go out and get a job. Okay, you want to go buy yourself some blood clothes, and, you know, parents, some parents are like, well, you do with your own money. Mm -hmm. But when I see elementary and middle school students, mm -hmm. girls dressed like a boy, mm -hmm. you know, to me, I'm like, why, why would you? Remember that you field to without Ash. God turned them on. And the parents are buying into so it. That, that's what you're saying. saying. Yeah. You know, like so the the dress dress like if you do that, that, the enemy's going to use that. A tool can take that out too. Yeah. Take them out. Yeah, because you I know someone. Do that. She's a, she was in elementary yeah. school that's and judging. junior high school. And her aunt bought all her school clothes. But her aunt refused to buy the boy clothes. But this little girl wanted to wear pants and polo shirts and uh, $200 sneakers. That's the only way she dressed. That's the only way she would like to dress. Her aunt said, no, I'm going to buy her girl clothes. The girl told her she ain't wearing it. The girl said, beautiful hair. The aunt said, I'm going to take you to the Dominicans, have your hair blown out, because she got like mixed hair. She said, no, you're not either. Junior high, I'm talking about elementary school and junior high school. She refused that's not, that's, not, that's not how you fight against the spirit. That's still that devil that you fight, he's just using the baby. Right. 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 You're not able to fight against that. 
you like that right. not in that form that he had try to use them to take you out or take mm-hmm. themselves out or mm-hmm. send them to the streets mm-hmm. so what you have to do with that is you have to go back to the vile passions you have to be taught this mm-hmm. that's why it's loose and running right. there's no one to teach how to come out of our passion, which is praying and fasting and committing, mm-hmm. uh, being committed, but they don't know this. They don't know what's wrong. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I went everywhere. I, you know, I explained I went everywhere I could. The only thing you know is I'm not going to put that on. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. That's not from you put it on. Mm-hmm. How you going to tell me how to dress when this thing is inside of me? Right. Mm-hmm. I was born like this. I, this didn't just happen overnight. Well, it was, see, sometimes I struggle because I see, like, the elementary girls. And I tell anybody, hey, I was the girl that climbed the trees, hopped the gates. You know, I would let my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom skirt, you know, put you know, some shorts and some jeans. I'm good to go. And, but on Sundays, I didn't mind putting on my dress, getting all curly girl. You know, but when I see the little girls, and it's like, oh, wow, you like this, like, 24 Because you didn't have the homosexual spirit. Right. They right. had the homosexual right. spirit. That's right. And then the child so how they deal with a minor okay. yeah. right. how how they has no yeah. choice in what they wear. No, they have yeah, they a they have they different from a tomboy now. Because they can sneak in if you do that. What you one thing you wanna do okay. as as parents okay. is show them love. Right. If you if you cannot show them that you love, if they want this, something else is wrong. Something mm-hmm. else is going on. Mm-hmm. In the first place, if your daughter won't boys' clothes, mm-hmm. it's time to get serious. How would you manage oh, and stuff with right. that? Right. How, yeah. How, yeah. What they need to do is first of all, they obviously already know what was wrong. Remember, I knew what was wrong <coughs> in kindergarten. Right. 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 Nobody right. would address it. Nobody would address it. Is but that nobody they just missed could. it. Like, okay, no, I'm not seeing what I'm seeing. No, my mother, she tried to address okay. it. Okay. But that devil was more cunning than that. Mm. He wouldn't really let her shut that down like that. Mm. And then there was someone else to help her out. My uncles were all gay. Mm. My aunties was gay. Well, I have a lot of uncles. Not all of them are gay. Mm. But I had a, lot, mama of, a lot of people <laughs> that was like <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 You have to make sure that you find somebody who knows this information today. Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if it was out yet. But to let you know how much and deep our pastors was in their word is still in the same book. Mm-hmm. He revealed it to me out of the same word. That's right. But it was just it's for a point in time. That's they right. were just scared to address The church mm-hmm. wouldn't address it. Right. But they wouldn't address drugs. Mm-hmm. So now that's why I tell you all the time, God has given you a ministry mm-hmm. to reach our youth mm-hmm. at that level and to the degree. So don't expect them to, to receive it and understand it because they were scared to address it. The reason why most of the pastors and stuff, they, they didn't say know. a thing. They and they ain't right. Like me, I didn't address my daughter because I couldn't tell her don't do what, what I'm you doing. Was doing. Exactly. So I wasn't right. I couldn't there address you it. You so I had to get right. So now it ain't going to happen. Right. Certain things you ain't doing in my house or, or in my presence. Because if, if it's my option and you ain't going to do it in my presence, then you got to take it away from me. But the, other the, option the is only out thing with that is mm-hmm. God dealt with you like that until you got over it. Absolutely. So right. now you're pushing That's something on me that I'm not right. ready for. Right. And, right. and you're choosing my life right. for me when you were supposed to raise me. You did raise me. You tried what you could. You did what you could. Right. But this kind is deeper than that. Mm-hmm. This kind is deeper than don't do this. I said don't do that because yeah. actually my mother never agreed with it. I was just, that devil inside me was more cunning. I knew how to, I went and got two jobs at 14 and paid for a driver's ahead so that I could get my license early and had a car at 15. Wow. On purpose. Well, okay, so the other thing I've noticed in this younger generation um, is the flip flop in trying it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love. Yeah, they're, they're mm-hmm. doing the experimenting. Well, it's the enemy sending them down that road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that ain't new. Curiosity. Curiosity. Those generations. Mm-hmm. No, this is thing they call, and this first time I heard it was about when we, it was a tenth grade. Oh, is there something different? Yeah, it's called love, love, lesbian until graduation. 
That's an acronym for Desmond until graduation. Yeah. Because when I was in school, I don't recall. I don't recall. Yeah, it's like to be It depends. Yeah. It's like they'll test it up to the girl who tests out being with a girl, and then, okay, you know, people have been. We have a question or comment right over here. Because also, too, when our daughter, because she's in the military now, and she's still living that lifestyle from high school to now. And, um, but one of the things that they had in high school was called the Gay Straight Alliance. Mm -hmm. To where, you know, you go into this class and it teaches you tolerance. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to teach you how to get along and how to respect, you know, mm -hmm. homosexuals and gays mm -hmm. and lesbians and stuff. But I found out that a lot of her friends was falling prey to it. Mm -hmm. So when she was in high school, a lot of them, that, that was what they were doing. And there's quite a few that still walk in. Well, you, you, she you, know why, you know why they do that? Oh, six. Because everybody else pushes it's them away doing. and don't show them no love. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you're looking for something to be a part of. You're mm -hmm. looking for a group. Notice the first thing everybody said was put them out. Mm -hmm. Don't agree with it. Okay, right. they're like good. They I thrive got on you. community. I got you. Community. My yeah. mother didn't put me out. I live with mine and look where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. yeah, I have a question. I have a, a good friend from high school. She, we've been friends a long time. It was a group of us, high school friends. Mm -hmm. And so now, because of it's just so popular to be gay, a lesbian, she's always, she's always, been, we've known it, but she thinks we didn't know, but we knew. And she kind of came and told me this story about when I was five years old, I knew something was different about me. And I asked my mom, how come I don't use the bathroom like a, or she was watching the other kids try to use the bathroom, and she wanted to know how come she couldn't stand up like a boy and use the bathroom kind of thing. So she knew. But this girl has gone to great lengths to get the Bible. And I mean, she has studied and found scriptures to validate her foolishness. It's there. And I mean, you can't stretch. I, I'm telling her, I have a, my mentor. She was in a lifestyle. She came out. Oh, she really, really wasn't gay then. I'm like, what? she lived it. Yeah, what do you mean? So she, I mean, she is so adamant that this is how she was born, God made her that way. So what are you saying? God made a mistake with me? I mean, yes, whatever I try to come with, it's like you said, they're already ready. And they don't see themselves. It's like, you ain't talking about me. But yeah, she, I mean, she. this is the head. She would just go to this scripture, go to that scripture. Mm -hmm. And John laid his head on Jonathan and, and the, what they had a relationship. With they, Jesus. No, Jonathan, no, 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 Jonathan and, David. and David. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, they had a blow. Oh, they like, showed up. No, that ain't what they That's her know. scripture. The she, devil puts up the same thing he gave the towel up. Jonathan and David <laughs> laid on there. John and Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, so yeah, they yeah. tried to say they pervert the word. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, yes. Satan perverted the word. Right, right. And he put it on here. He would literally take you to those perverted scriptures. That's even more because you actually can make that word say. What you want to say. She a lot of has done that. That's called she has done that. That's I mean, where they put in what they want to say. And that's yeah. the thing, you have to you have to be read up on the word. It's just like if the atheist come to you and try to have the apologetics of why he's an atheist. Mm -hmm. We gotta have the apologetics of why we're a Christian. We mm -hmm. gotta know the word. We can't be half mm -hmm. with the word or half out the word mm -hmm. because you'll get caught up. Mm -hmm. And then they really not gonna believe you then they're gonna be like, oh you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna you're gonna start questioning what they're saying mm -hmm. because you're like, okay, well then they show me a scripture and then if you're not the word is not seated in you, you will get caught up. Because mm -hmm. I have we're not with this particular thing, or even with, in some situations with this, yeah. but also yeah. with That's atheism right. mm -hmm. and saying why I am a Christian mm -hmm. or why, and not just because, oh, Jesus died for me. You know, you got to come with more than that with them atheists believe because they Christ believe, so. they, they have they studied the Bible, so, so you have to come with them more than that. But I had another question mm -hmm. for you. How is it now with your dating life, with women knowing that at one point you was gay? I mean, how is that? You know, you know, are they open to it? Are they like, no, you know, you still may be gay? No, seriously, because I know that no, some it's, people, it's I, I, have hit, I heard it, they were like, nah, he's still gay, he's undercover now, you know, or playing. Yeah. So I want to know how, how is that now that you're you're a straight male? But with this sexual perverted world, they don't care. <laughs> oh. But um, the, the first thing they don't care. The first thing uh, um, I did was when I gave my life to Christ, I felt very, very, very bad for what I did. Mm -hmm. No, you don't have to do this. 
God forgives you and all of that stuff. But because of, remember how I told you, I converted them so many over. I converted several men over. I'm not talking about 20, 30, 40, and 50. It was the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so what I've done is I've committed myself. The Bible says that some will give themselves away for the gospel. Mm -hmm. And so I said that I would not have kids and I would not get married. And I would go around and help, you know, clean up some of the mess that I feel like I took a part in. Mm -hmm. But if the Lord feel fit, he can send me a wife and some kids when he got through using me if he wanted to. Yeah, and that's what I'm praying about. Oh, but, <laughs> okay, we <laughs> All right, great. Yes, I yeah. am. I'm yeah. almost <laughs> great. Lucky. But Look, with that said, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I want to know. So I'm with kid. that said, a person can actually say, well, he's not really delivered. I'm not saying that you are, because I don't know who you are. But, well, well he's not really delivered, because he, he still don't want a woman. You know, he's saying that he's saving himself for, for the Lord, and now he's just out there evangelizing to the gay community. But he, he I've never seen him with a woman still. So how? Care what people say. Wait, 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 wait. First, I'm, I'm just. I'm no, you know, no, no, no. Okay. I like that question. No, I like that question. But first, um, when you give your life to Christ, there's a change in everybody's yes. life. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you don't just witness to, witness to the gays. You witness to everybody. Right. Right. And that devil is in them using them, trying to convict, you know, change you over mm -hmm. to do, you know, discredit you to make you want to quit. That ain't gonna work either. Um, I had a lot. That's the first uh, device he used when I switched over, which it really did not matter because if I was, if I wasn't, what difference does it make? You know, God can use whoever He wanted you. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, when that enemy get ready to send somebody towards you. You are, God already set up a standard that he can't even get. Mm -hmm. He can't get to you. And so the things that do slip through and come through, and, and this always worked. If you never heard a rumor put out on you, mm -hmm. you just think I was the right person. It's mm -hmm. a real friend. They the one who put it out. Mm -hmm. But when you go out and, and you witness and you minister, people can see the light. Yes. You can look at somebody and see the spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you can see them. Now, what I tell them is there might still be some feminine inside of you because this, like, and I didn't go into this, the book is in it, it's in the book. But the longer you live in this lifestyle, the longer it's going to take for you to come out. Mm -hmm. this, this lifestyle, like I said, just sold your soul. Mm -hmm. And so what you've done is you've learned this lifestyle. It's a lifestyle you have to join groups and go and find out how to live. Mm -hmm. And once you found out how to live this, now you got to come back. You know, rebuttal. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't exactly get in a relationship with a woman because of the battles that I have. Mm -hmm. I told them um, last night, the other day, that when you're looking for a man, all the women actually were sort of trying to invest the thirsty okay. <laughs> after me when I was there. And I told them, could you really, 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 really deal with who I am? Mm -hmm. You know, could you deal with the enemy that's after me? What about my mind? Mm -hmm. You know. What about when he come back to make sure my 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 house is swept clean, mm -hmm. and he brings seven more? You know, mm -hmm. we got kids together. Did you make sure I was disease free? Mm -hmm. What wait a year and make sure that you know I'm not bipolar? Can't mm -hmm. wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wait that you don't year. just get in a relationship, and it's very important <laughs> when you get in a relationship to know what you get in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the you know what? You know what else related to that? To what uh, she said is that. Sin is sin. Mm -hmm. So you decide to, to please people to get into a relationship with a woman and you're sleeping with the woman mm -hmm. and not married. Mm -hmm. So what you know, the sin mm -hmm. is sin. You know, just mm -hmm. for for people to be satisfied mm -hmm. and not have their own uh, uh, ideas about you, right. you know, you still represent Christ. Mm -hmm. right. So no matter what, you know, and you have to do what God says, no matter what people say. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, even with that and other things that we too many times, it's more important what people think. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we can't be people pleasers right. and God pleasers exactly. as well. Right. So that's what's ultimately so important because people would do that, and then when you don't, when they see you with a woman, oh, he must be sleeping with her, so he still ain't right. So yeah. your, your, your testimony is, 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 you know, <laughs> to no avail. So we have, in other words, buck what you say. Yeah. Okay. And oh, and that's what, what the enemy is trying to do. He's trying to kill the testimony <laughs> because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of God. Yeah. 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 Because we overcome yeah. by the blood of the Lamb and the, the word of the right. testimony. Yeah. So he's trying to kill the testimony. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do. Yeah. Right. But and if we actually think about this, 
God revealed this to me. Christians commit idolatry not even knowing by That's default. Mm -hmm. And he said, look at what you did. Okay. I use myself being a preacher mm -hmm. and, and having secret sin and sinking. Mm -hmm. Guess what? I cared more about what my pastor knew mm -hmm. forgetting God knows everything. Okay. We right. bow down right. to God. He's right. omnipotent, omnipresent, and all knowing, seeing, and all wise. We say God know everything we're doing, mm -hmm. but we'll do our secret sin and care more about our pastor finding out, knowing God's watching us every moment. Which one can send us to heaven and hell? That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's what we that's what Christians do today. Mm -hmm. They they hide their dirty sins so they can preach or be on a board or do this or do that and not seek the totality of deliverance mm -hmm. because they they're committing idolatry. Mm -hmm. You putting your pastor on a pedestal ahead yeah. of God. Yeah. If we think about God. Holiness should be our witness. Because God see what I'm doing if yes. nobody else. Yes. That's right. Amen. Nobody else. Mm -hmm. I assure my wife of this. I'm married to God's daughter. Mm -hmm. God is my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody thinks. I travel from different cities. Now they stick in flyby places. I might have to go on a road trip. I'm married. Mm -hmm. My wife said, you got your ring? Dang, baby, I left my ring at home. Guess what? I'm still married. That's right. Ring or not, I'm married. Yeah. If she's here and I'm in Dallas, I'm married. If I'm in Uganda, I'm married. Mm -hmm. Ain't God see me? Mm -hmm. What I care what man think. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. But even <laughs> and, and to, wait a minute, to add to that, we are supposed to be yeah. living with witnesses. That's right. Yes. Living. You you are to be a living yes. sacrifice mm -hmm. when you give your life to Christ, you, there should be something different about yes. you instead of next to yes. a sin. For yes. real. That's we right. should be able to That's tell right. that you are saved by yeah. grace. Mm -hmm. Not just, are we all saved? You make, no, we all should be the same way. Mm -hmm. Which leads to my next book that I have. Most people ask, like, how are you standing in there? You know, everybody left you, nobody believed, nobody cared. How are you doing? And so, we're supposed to be prisoners of Christ. Yes. I have another book that's coming out in three weeks. It's called Crisis Prison Has No Wall. Because yet all of this stuff is in front of me, but you have to choose to live a Christian yes. life. Yes. You have to choose to say no mm -hmm. to all of this. The drugs mm -hmm. are still there. The boys are still yes. there. The girls are still there. The sex, the lying, the stealing, whatever it was, mm -hmm. and all the rest of them is there. But you have to say no. Cast down every thought. Bring it under the Christ's mm -hmm. objection. You have to do that so that you can remain you know, faithful to God and mm -hmm. living. Yeah. Witness, because the enemy is trying to kill your testimony. That, yeah. That's his job. Oh yes. And so they have to do that. Yeah, that's a um, I'm oh, sorry. That was a um a, a, a slogan that the Lord gave me when I met you. It's like um, deliverance is a privilege, mm -hmm. but staying delivered in that state of deliverance is a choice. Mm -hmm. That's yes. something you got to choose every day, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask about. For the young people that are here, mm -hmm. um, I know you talked about you have the young people like calling you, wanting you know, wanting to be delivered. So, what are some of the things that they need to be aware of in case they're approached or they're enticed to try to you know they're not homosexual or whatever, but they come with other little tricks I know to try to entrap them. Mm -hmm. So, kind of speak on that if you would. Well. At the age of 12, God, you're already responsible. So that means that God didn't put something there inside of you. When you had your first little come, they had their first little period, they understand boy and woman good right mm -hmm. then and there. If you're raising them up as you should at church, they know the enemy's devices. Mm -hmm. you know, they have a spirit. If they're spirit-led, mm -hmm. they will understand, but they have to be spirit-fed. If not, that enemy mm -hmm. is going to get them. There's no way around him. There's no way around him but through Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what you're really fighting is the, is the enemy itself. Mm -hmm. There's no way around that. And as you can see how the world is today, he's going to use them. So you have to have them filled with the Holy Ghost and in church and reading their word and keep them out of the world. But yet, 
don't put them so much that when they do get freedom, they go oh. flop and fall into it. Right. You know, they still need to make mm -hmm. some errors. Mm -hmm. Some mistakes you do, you learn from mm -hmm. by making them. Mm -hmm. You know, some things you went through. And don't forget how you was <laughs> and how, look, how long it took you to get yeah. to your deliverance. Mm -hmm. Why you pointing at them and making sure their life is, you know, miserable. Cause nine times out of ten, most people that try to get out of this lifestyle as young adults, they usually go out through suicide. Mm -hmm. And it's because nobody understands. Nobody took the time mm -hmm. to love them. Mm -hmm. and, or either care mm -hmm. what they're mm -hmm. going through and how they feel. Okay. Okay. So, in my lifestyle, guys really place me around a lot of gay guys. Mm -hmm. And um, a guy that I went to school with, mm -hmm. I actually worked two jobs with him. And um, he seems like, I mean, I'm telling you, he lives a lifestyle of homosexuality, mm -hmm. but he is not to the point where he's dressing up in girls' clothing and makeup and, you know, doing it. He still dresses like a man. Right. And when he worked at the job that I was working at, at an American company, I'm telling you, everybody that walked in that door would love on him. Mm -hmm. He had the great personality. Like, I'm just trying to see, what would you do with that? What would you, how would you yeah, minister to someone like that? Because they seem like they are in such of a happy mood mm -hmm. and everybody, he's so friendly to everyone. Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's so loving to everyone, but he, he still has to repent. He still has to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And when I look at him deeply, when I think about him, I'm like, he's struggling with something, but yet on the outside, mm -hmm. He is so full of joy, mm -hmm. and now that I, he works another mm -hmm. job, because um, across from my job, that's where he works, but I haven't visited him yet. But when I look at him passing by the window, he looks like he is in a state of mind where he's not wanting to be there. Wow. He doesn't want to be at the job. He just mm -hmm. seems as if he doesn't want to. I have him on Instagram, and I look at the pictures, and he just seems like he's in a down mood trying to find himself. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking, Lord, how do I approach that? And without this, without being rude or without being, um, without you know, jamming Christ in his mm -hmm. face, I want to be able to approach him in a loving way. Did he love him? Honestly, as a friend, yes. I'm like, mm -hmm. he's such a great guy, but I know that he needs deliverance. Got to love him. He, his character sounds like my character. That's how I was. Wasn't nobody gonna say nothing because I was so full of love. Mm -hmm. I was joy. I was smile. Deal with you if I, if I had to, but. I was so full of love, I was so full of joy, I was so peaceful on the outside. Mm -hmm. On the outside. Mm -hmm. But once again on the inside, you hate it. Mm -hmm. You you didn't like this. You, why why am I like this? Why can't I it's never happiness? The reason why you see the outside like that, because gay means happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A homosexual means to have sex. And so he's gay. Clearly he's gay. You don't have to dress in a women's clothes. But he's trying his best to do whatever it takes to be happy, mm -hmm. to make himself feel love, to feel joy, and he must need it. When God put that around, if I wouldn't have done a notice, I tried to kill myself. If God would have not put all that around me, I would have probably already tried everything I could to mm -hmm. take myself out. <laughs> but the way I would um, do it, <laughs> the way I would do it is. I would ask some rhetorical questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want me kids? Mm -hmm. I said, nah, girl, I don't want no kids. Mm -hmm. You want to get married? Mm-mm, find me a man. Are you really, really happy? But not in a bad way. You're going to have to be real. You're going to have to laugh at it. Because you're talking, you agree to deal with, you agree to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. Oh. So basically what you're, you're saying is she's planting a right? seed Inside, she's seeds. <laughs> seeds. Inside. Okay. Yeah, they're rhetorical okay. questions. You don't need answers. Now, yeah. he's one I, you know, I desire to help first because mm -hmm. he, I'm so comfortable with mm -hmm. I went to high school. I graduated with them. Okay. Now, there's three other gay guys at my job that I'm at now. So, I'm, that's why I'm like, God has placed me around this atmosphere. And I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So, now I'm starting to actually. Do you, do you mm -hmm. feel like God is. is Really like, you there for yes, because I tried to quit. Let me tell you, I tried to quit this job, <laughs> and after a few months, I was back at this job. So now I'm like, okay, now God, what do you want me to do here? And now I'm starting to post quotes on the board, and then I guess it's the beginning of something because I'm still at this job. Well, you have the heart that they have. That's what God bless you. Mm -hmm. You have the heart that they have. They have that heart. Homosexuals are not bad people. Mm -hmm. no, people are not they, bad people. They're people not bad, bad things. Mm -hmm. But you have the hearts that they have. Mm -hmm. 
Meaning, when exactly I want to make sure I'm... You know how you just say joy and love and everybody? All that the same is there. Sure does. I could feel everything off of you. And if I lived in that lifestyle, I would still come to you first. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Out of everyone in the room. The way she came out, mm -hmm. the way she talked, the way she spoke, mm -hmm. the way she gave love, even her poem mm -hmm. spoke about the secrets that goes on in yes. the yes. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you want to touch yeah. yourself? Because the same way that women do is what the enemy try to put on the sexual, make you portray a woman. Mm -hmm. Try to make you feel like that and you feel like you need that touch, mm -hmm. that feel. But God says he put you there because you have the same love, the same heart that they have. You mm -hmm. have that love. And what you have to do is show them that love. They mm -hmm. need that. Mm -hmm. You know, show them that. But then, like, maybe ease it, maybe slide that one in the book. You know, read this. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is so good. I'm oh, my serious. God. This is so good. That book is so good. It's so good. What did you say? No, read it. And, and, and I, the first page, I believe God put it like that, um, is to get them, catch their attention. Mm -hmm. And, and once you, because you got it, they got to get through it. But you got to get to them, but you can't do it like you're judging them. I know. Because you have to have put up a defense right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you still can be honest with them. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about, what's your religion? You know, rhetorical question. Are you a Christian? Do you believe in the word? Okay, tell them your sin. You know, I was like this and I read the word. And then when I found out that I could not do this and get to heaven, what do, what do you think about yours? Mm -hmm. I was thinking about you the other day and I was reading and I said, I'm going to show him this. And but it's so much easier it when it's one on one, too. <laughs> because when other people are around, mm -hmm. I, you can't just stop. What I wanted to say a couple of things like, um, I don't know if y'all go out in fellowship or maybe invite him out to lunch or coffee or something like that is one thing. And then another thought was, you know, maybe asking him, you know, how are you doing? No, how are you really doing? I saw your, I've been seeing your pictures on Instagram and I just feel like, mm -hmm. you know, there's something going on, you know, and just trying to ask questions. I love asking, because I do counseling, asking yeah. questions and getting them to talk. Mm -hmm. And I would say always pray first and ask God for a download yeah, of this anointing, you know. You already have the love, you have yeah. a lot of the equipping that you need, yeah. but then just really ask him for that extra that you're going to need mm -hmm. to be able to go forward, you know, and, and do that part because it's, right. it's, he works through that love. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know if I, if I can say this real quick, Matthew. Um, one thing about people I learned in counseling years ago, um, 23 years ago to be exact, People don't care how much you know until they, until they know how much you care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you genuinely love somebody, a uh, true case in point, I was dealing with something in the beginning of my marriage. And me and Leola were out to take care of some business with a one of meat like this. So, and my wife called and said, so do you really trust Leola? You really, that's really your people? Because she always heard me talk so much about them and how I love them. I said, Leola's real, she love you, if she loves you, she love you. If she don't like you, you ain't gonna be around her long, but she's gonna let you know. I don't like you, go on. But anyway, so so anyway, my wife said that and she would set me up because we had some serious issues we need to deal with. So when me and Leola pull up, she just hit Leola with all of it and all heck broke loose. So I say that to say, I generally know Leola loves me because I stole her mama from her. I stole her husband, her family. They're my people. They're hers too, but they're mine. And I so, stole his nephew. Right? Yeah, so she stole his nephew. She finally got me back. But she loves me enough that she could tell me, you're wrong, you're wrong, you need to fix it, you need to fix it now, and you ain't right, big brother. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, she know we know the word. She loves me enough. She didn't beat me up. She didn't stop loving me. I listened to everything she said and took that whooping because she loved me. When you love people, yes. you love them regardless. You don't judge them That's because right. of their sins. My, my, my same daughter, when she came here, she met a friend. One of her friends was clearly a legend. They, her mama, her, and some of the other were having fits. I loved her. Too. I said, baby, that ain't the road you're going to go. And I ain't say nothing else about it. But Angel, I love Angel, and I treat Angel with the same respect. And I only minister to her what God would allow me to. 
because she wasn't my assignment. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an anointing to minister to her. So when God releases you with that anointing, he will endow you with power mm -hmm. and timing. That's right. Mm -hmm. And at that time, he'll love with love and kindness have I drawn yes. He'll come to you. Mm -hmm. And guess what? On the inside, he'll be crying on the inside. He'll sit down and talk to you. You'll say mm -hmm. one word. He'll break. Mm -hmm. But he said, read that book. The valley of liberty. Because the anointing destroys the yoke. Right. So when God anoints you, if he's mm -hmm. giving it to you, he's preparing you for impact. Mm -hmm. When is that impact? You don't know right now. But the very desire that burns in your heart is God's indication to you that it's already done. Mm -hmm. Prepare for impact. Mm -hmm. Because he's setting you up to go in with love. Mm -hmm. Y'all grew up together. You know him. You know all about mm -hmm. him. You ain't never changed your back. You still love him. Mm -hmm. Right? With love and kindness you draw him. Yes, we right. can't be yes, afraid right. of this or afraid of that. Mm -hmm. All we do is sin different. Our mm -hmm. sins are different. Yes, right. So you love people through it. Yes. But you have standards in your house. Mm -hmm. My might, I, we have a 12 year old son. Some things he can't tell me. No, you're mine. You don't have a choice with this or mm -hmm. that. Right. Some things he has a choice, but he has a voice and he has a heart. And I listen to his concerns. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I love him and I don't judge people. If my son had, uh, my 12 year old, if he had a boy that acted funny, I'm not going to tell him he can't play with him, he can't love him, and I'm going to treat the person, the kid different. Mm -hmm. With children, you love them. That's right. With adults, you love them. Yes. And I don't think, okay, I know some people that are homosexual or lesbian. I don't say they're my gay friends. I say they're my friends. Because I ain't concerned with their sin. Mm -hmm. And when God gives me the anointing mm -hmm. to minister to them, mm -hmm. I don't condone their lifestyle, but they wouldn't condone mine either. You, if I if I was back then, you're a preacher, but you dating right, her, right, you sleeping right, with her, right. that ain't right, preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I might as well just stay like I am, right? God starts with the church. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, that was the church, <laughs> would turn from their wicked ways and humble themselves. Then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. Yes. So quit, keep planting seeds, sister. It's working. Might not see it today, but it's working. You keep planting seeds and you keep loving. You don't you but you raise a standard. Certain things don't go on, but you raise a standard in love. Because people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care from children. Yes, right. Pastor Man told I was ministering some children, ministering to some little children. Their mother came to me and said, Pastor, will you minister to these kids? Mm -hmm. I went to my pastor at that time and said, they want me to minister to their kids. Have you talked to them? What's going on? Because I was, it was his congregation. Mm -hmm. He said, well, listen, if God has led them to you, then you handle it. Mm -hmm. But remember this, they don't know you yet. That child don't know you. Mm -hmm. He don't care how much you know until he know how much you care. Yes. So the first thing you do is slowly start showing him love every time you see him. Mm -hmm. Showing mm -hmm. love. Let him know that he, I call it C factors. Mm -hmm. Smile builds comfortability. Mm -hmm. Eye contact builds trust. Enthusiasm builds excitement. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Let him know you care. And then minister to him. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said no to a good book. Daddy young man was trying to find a way out. But he don't know how. Mm -hmm. He don't know the way out. He needs someone who can help him out. Um, he probably would be offended if you told him something. I don't know how y'all have, you know, how the communication goes. Mm -hmm. But that's another way that you have to get to him is you're gonna have to rekindle your relationship. Cause we are we on good terms, and mm -hmm. I always speak. Um, and I'll be like, no, you're going to have a wife. You're going to have a church. So I always speak it over him that he is going to have a wife and he will have children. He will get married. And it's like another guy. I got two guys at my job. One is atheist and he's gay. <laughs> and then one is, grew up in a church and his family did kick him out from Mississippi, country town. And he used to sit right next to me at work. And I was like, Lord Jesus, what do you do? What, what, what well, do you have you, me do? You kind of being offensive. He probably take offense to that because you're telling a gay man he's going to be married to a woman. Mm -hmm. Actually, he didn't because we had developed a relationship. So we was in mm -hmm. conversation first. Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, I said it jokingly, but I said it. Right. So it doesn't matter how you say it, as long as it's put out there in the atmosphere. So, but God has, um, God has actually, um, um, she act, well, yeah, because we didn't do it all the time, but then he used to come in talking about his boyfriend, and they, and they, you know, and I was like, okay, I can't hear this, I can't, I gotta turn around, I can't, I can't hear this, so I didn't, I didn't say things a lot of times, because I knew it wasn't my place, and God didn't tell me to say, well, you know, anything, so I just turned around, and I play music, or I act like I don't hear it, or I just engage <laughs> it. You know, because he was speaking a lot of, you know, seriously, he was speaking a lot of stuff that I did not want to hear. <laughs> when you, you know? argue, you can't do that, dog. Huh? <laughs> you can't do that. So what should I have done? Is he your nephew? No, no, no. He's I your have friend? one at work, too. Work yeah. Somebody, he's your friend? A co-worker, you yeah. You have to show him love. He needs somebody to talk to. Well, yeah, I did speak to him when they got into detail. <laughs> You know, when it get into oh, detail, no. like a, a yeah. man and a woman relationship, I'm not going, I can't, I, I just shut down. But it's his lifestyle, and if you're going to help somebody, the first thing you need to know is how they feel inside, and how deep they are into what they're in. So, t- so tell me, that's okay, so how, how would I counsel that? Because I yeah, want to know, well, first of all, you need to be a friend first. Right, right. okay. First, me and him still friends. friends. No, a friend care about what you care about. Mm-hmm. If me and you friends, I can come and talk to you about anything. Mm-hmm. And you're going to listen. You're not going to turn your back mm-hmm. on me and then say I'm your friend. Mm-hmm. Right. No, <laughs> you're not my friend. Okay. And if I got to watch what I tell you, you're definitely not my friend. Right. Okay. Okay. I got to watch what I tell you. Dang, and you're definitely not a family member if I can't come and tell you. Let me tell you what happened to you and my boyfriend. I don't want to hear that. So how would I respond? I mean, well, seriously. Because- first, you have to be a friend and make him feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Second of all, just because you disagree with something don't mean that you have to put that out. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to say, you're going to get married. And that's offensive. I was gay. It's offensive. Right. We can play it off the mound all we want. Okay, yeah, sure. I don't know. Right. One day. Hallelujah. Yes. You got to be married. Okay. Yeah. Or I got a girlfriend. I'm a girl. What do you mean I'm going to have a boyfriend? No, I. So Not at this see. time, I'm under vow passion. You, you're still dealing with an enemy. He's, he's going to keep speaking to them while you're speaking to them. And he's already got them grounded in, in what they believe. And so you have to become a true friend and you have to let them know the word without being a preacher. Mm-hmm. A preacher is for church, mm-hmm. not for friends. Mm-hmm. And even being a father and, and kids and stuff, I don't want my preacher, father, I want my daddy. Mm-hmm. That's good. And a daddy don't yeah. put you out because of your sins. That's what yeah. preachers do to it. people at church. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I'm not going to pick and choose what you do. I'm just going to tell you what God says. Right. And then depending on how you take it and how you, because if you do the wrong thing, you can push him over. So I had to fight. They, he's a homosexual. He'll fight you. I know I would have. You better watch it. You know, it's the devil in it. Mm-hmm. And so you need to spirit. You like it's you like right. right. But it's especially that spirit. Mm-hmm. But it's real cunning. So you have you have to be, you have to be, um, I have something to drink. No? No, no question. Oh, okay. I just wanted to come on the share button. Oh, sure. Go ahead. No. Oh, having my whole family here and listen to everything. There's one element that we miss as Christians that's important. It is wisdom. By faith. The way I love my wife, I love my wife, I love my children, but the way I demonstrate that love is distinctively different. That's the wisdom of God. Mm-hmm. And so in these situations where you have to deal with somebody in sin or where they are sin, I have to deal with my children in wisdom. Mm-hmm. They need to know I love them, yes. But the way I communicate love to them is at a different level mm-hmm. than the way I communicate that my wife. And even when they're doing something that I don't like or that's wrong, I still have to be able to communicate love. Mm-hmm. And yet, let them know that's not right. Mm-hmm. So to address that and to address that in all of us, because all of us know somebody in sin. Yes. Right. 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 All of us. Right. Mm-hmm. I always know someone that's, that's in that in that lifestyle. Right, the issues look like look. There's a whole book on wisdom, mm-hmm. and the Bible says, "Look, if you're going to win souls, you got to be wise." Right. 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 
Right. See, we not not we not tapped into that depth of God where God shows us how to use the truth properly mm -hmm. to draw people. Mm -hmm. How how to use the truth to draw somebody mm -hmm. into where to the light when they're in darkness. Mm -hmm. And so those things I constantly pray. Oh, I don't know how to be no father. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't. I, I didn't have an example. I don't know how to be a husband. I didn't have an a good example as a husband. So if you don't help me, I'm still going to be a failure sitting in the church. I'm still going to be a failure knowing scriptures. Mm -hmm. You got to give me wisdom on yes, how to God. be the father you want me, yes. to, the husband you want me to be, Come the on. friend you want me to yes. be, the, the soul winner you want yes. me to be, the evangelist you want me to be, the pastor you want me to yes. be. You need wisdom for all of those things. Right. Anointing, yes, but you need wisdom on how to communicate effectively, and then even know when to shut up and just listen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know what's kept my marriage? You know what's you know what's kept my marriage intact? It's not the things I said; it's the things I didn't say. That's right. So I, I would share with everyone, and like I got sons growing here, and one of the things that's plaguing my heart. And I ask for your prayers. Mm -hmm. Is they're at that stage, mm -hmm. right, right. and and they're at a, a, in a in a world and in a culture in a society that they are having to deal with things. They are having to face things that I didn't have to face, right. mm -hmm. or at least not at that level. Mm -hmm. right, right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I I wasn't even thinking about this stuff mm -hmm. as a child, and even the fact that my my parents didn't teach me this stuff, I wasn't worried about it. Cause it wasn't widespread. Right, right. It wasn't on every turn. It, was, it wasn't in. The, it wasn't laced in the culture the way it is. Mm -hmm. It was still in the closet. Right. 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 Now it's in the church. Yeah. Now it's in the pulpit. Yes. Now it's holding yes. the Bible. Yes. And so the issue is, Lord, I need wisdom in this hour. Yeah, one thing you have to remember. The enemy's device. Mm -hmm. One thing you have to remember, and I'm old enough, I'm not old, I'm mature enough <laughs> to realize that <laughs> All right. we as a race of people, mm -hmm. the way we were raised, yes. if you did something wrong, you got beat. You got spanked. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, not much talk. Yeah. You know what? I ain't getting no old. But you should. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you know, that's, we were raised like that. You know, and for me, it was it was not much love expressed, yes. nor shown. That's how we were brought up. That's how you know the, the resolution was a spanking. Now I'm I'm in the medical profession, so I'm parallel paralleling ignorance related to what you were saying. Just like men don't like to get prostate exams and get their PSA done at the age of 40, so you can be early diagnosed with prostate cancer and get cured. Yes. And that's because, even though some of them know there's still not enough public education mm -hmm. that's been done related to that, so they won't die yeah. from a disease that kills more black men because they don't know why it occurs in black men. I have my theory. Why it occurs in black men more than in other race, and more black men die, as Emerson knows, because they don't do the screening. Mm -hmm. By the time they are diagnosed, it's stage D and it's metastasized. Mm -hmm. That's why they die. Mm -hmm. That's why they die. So I'm paralleling that to how we were brought up and the ignorance that exists. So I'm saying public education for us as a race of people, if nobody else gets it, but what you're doing is important because we need to be educated that these the people that are in the, the lifestyle, they need love. Yes. We think, oh no, uh-uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm still thinking, wow, I'm supposed to listen. You know, I'm supposed to show, I show the love, but I'm still supposed to listen. And that's education for me. You know, so we need that. So we can, over time, and it's in God's hand, when they will flip the switch, the switch will come on. So I parallel that, and I think about that. Wow, this is awesome. You know, and I thank God for it. So the education, I'm saying, I'm thinking public education with this, and I don't know how, you know, for lack of a better term, we need to be educated mm -hmm. about what God said, how the way to, the way to do this, mm -hmm. and show love, because he, he, when you think about it, he loves us in spite of our mess. Yes. Right. Yes. I don't know right. what my mess was, it was a mess. Yes. Anything against him was a mess. Yes. You know, so he went to the cross for my mess. Yes. Right. So we need to think about that and say, I ain't no better than nobody else. I got my junk in my trunk. Mm -hmm. And my car, thank God, is locked, sealed, and don't know, I know what's behind it but him. Mm -hmm. And because it's not coming out anymore, but I was delivered thank you, from something. That's right. Yes. From something. So we are all, the foot of the cross is level. Yes. 
And this is seeking wisdom. Yeah, yeah. This so is just seeking yeah. wisdom. The yeah. Bible says so that education is what God has yeah. given. Yeah. Man, that's so I think I thank God for you. I, I Amen. Really do. Me too. I want to just inject Praise something God. based on what she was saying about education. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we started out with this whole thing about how the church needs to be educated as to how this spirit has been able to come in and really rob us, you know, and, and then we don't have enough of knowledge to be able to confront it. So therefore it's kind of swept under a rug. The reason why we're here tonight and we're listening and we're talking, we're giving general feedback is good. It's being recorded. So I want to make sure that I have you know, access to give everybody to make sure that you can listen to it in your own time. So if you go back and listen to a lot, of, there was a lot that was said here tonight that I believe is, is, is beneficial and helpful. So where if you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you more in-depth information and just continue to go read over the stuff that you didn't understand, go listen again. Go before the Holy Spirit, ask Him for a deeper, you know, revelation and knowledge on it. And then keep, let's keep in contact. Because I believe that God is providing a platform. It may start out small just like this, but think of if you had, you and I have access to the same information. I believe this is the Lord of God. I haven't heard, whenever we had his first recording, what we did, I said this would be a call, a night of authenticity with Apostle Antoine Amy. I haven't heard of a, of a deliverance testimony as authentic as, as I've heard his, and I've heard a lot of them, mm-hmm. okay? And so, with the authentication, God provided some extra things that I hadn't heard. The information from Romans, the first chapter, I think was most profound. We all got it in here. That's why we had to be born again. All of us were born in sin, shaping and nickel. That's why whenever he said, when people say they were born that way, they were. You can go ahead and read with them now. <laughs> right. It's true. Right. Amen. They were we born in born sin, shaping and nickel. Mm-hmm. So guess what? Everybody has that hormone that either goes further, too far to the left or too far to the right. And, so and if God right. don't get in somebody to get to our children and get to us and communicate wisdom, mm-hmm. as you were saying to them, they're going to teeter and totter. Just like when I was in the school system, you know, um, and I saw the film about, you know, sex education. I looked at that and because I didn't understand it, I thought, like, oh, no, not here. Mm-mm. I was like, no, I made a conscious decision that I did not want to be penetrated. But that was God's way for procreation to take place. Mm-hmm. And I was totally set against, no, I'm not going that route. I had already had an experience with my stepsister that had already thrown me into that cycle mm-hmm. of understanding that masturbation from that level. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying to you, you have a question? You have something? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's why I like your poem. Um, that's what I'm saying. You, we have this on a recording. If you need to listen to it over and over and over again, and then when you get in a place where if you got somebody that you can trust and you want to release this information to them, it's, it's certainly, you know, I don't want to put anybody on the spot because I know you all have shared <coughs> very deeply. I'm already free out. I ain't looking forward to going back. The devil can't trip me back over in that direction. Y'all, because all y'all will be praying for me Amen. and covering me. Amen. But, We have got to be in a position to release information at a level that people can understand it, they can admit that it's true, and they can go ahead on and ask God for help. So that's the thing that that I wanted to share, Um, and I want to make sure everybody gets some refreshments before we go. Just one quick thing, Um, just like as what I've experienced growing up, family members, I just, I don't know, it's, it's y'all business if y'all do this, but family members, one thing that triggered our homosexuality in my spirit is family members, you know, exposing themselves, mm-hmm. friends exposing themselves. Like, let's say y'all changed or whatever, mm-hmm. locker rooms, mm-hmm. homes, mm-hmm. rooms. Oh, we all have the same thing. Mm-hmm. No, oh, you don't know. We're, I'm, I'm, you know, something point. was in me when I was born, mm-hmm. and now that, you know, it's exposed and all this stuff is happening and I'm seeing these things. It's triggering it more and more. It's building up more and more in my spirit because my family members are doing this and triggering things, making me think it's okay. So then me, in my mind, oh, okay, so I think it's okay for me to go in this area and be comfortable with this. And now it's like I don't want no one. I don't, I, I don't want to do this with my children. I don't want to, you know, be completely in nude with my child saying, oh, we got the same thing. No, that's probably what other people do as, you know, they feel comfortable with that. But in my opinion, that triggers on because you don't know what is carrying on through my 
child. You don't know what's carrying on through my spirit that I, mm-hmm. something's latched onto me as mm-hmm. building up more and more homosexuality within me. That's so I just wanted to share that and say, you know, just be mindful. Mm-hmm. Even though you're our family, just, you know, make sure that, you know, your child is not building up on homosexuality because of what you put into them. That's yeah. powerful, Arnisha. That's good, man. Finish off with Noah. You know exactly where I was going, right? Okay. We got okay. some goody, goody, goody in this here revelation. Okay. okay. <laughs> Y'all remember when, when Noah's son was mm-hmm. cursed because he looked on him mm-hmm. because Noah got drunk in the tent. Exactly. Everybody want to say it was because Noah, he saw his father's nakedness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh-uh. The Bible says when Noah saw what he had done, done. Mm-hmm. what did he do? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, the evidence was on Noah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We looked that up. We I looked had, it up. Uh, um, I had, well, I had already heard that before, mm-hmm. and um, and I had, man, mm-hmm. uh, um, I had told it because it had begin. The Lord revealed to me that it happened from the beginning, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it began with Noah and Ham or Noah and Canaan, mm-hmm. actually. And it was not, and I knew it from the moment when I read it, when it said when Noah had knew mm-hmm. what had been done. I knew it then because of the word knew. Mm-hmm. Um, that he had done more. Who would curse, you know, their child because they literally mm-hmm. saw them naked. Yeah. Right. You know, you're not going to curse, you know, the grandkid, child, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. And so it had went further than that. Mm-hmm. And you're right. Once mm-hmm. you do that, you open it up to a generation a generational curse and, and that's probably where they come from yeah. because he cursed the generation mm-hmm. of them mm-hmm. from there you know, from the the other other it went in backwards yes, yes. and yes. covered him but yes. if you read that I mean if you read that from the moment you read it it tells you what took place yeah. mm-hmm. it's just taking the time and reading the word mm-hmm. right reading it, it, the the way it, it, it tells you right off the bat mm-hmm. why would the other brothers why would you, just what you said about mm-hmm. looking and seeing, mm-hmm. why would they back him to never even yeah. see her yeah. and look on his neck? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I always, always knew. I always had a question mark. Right there. Because I always had a question mark yeah. about this. Because I was like, well, why he just cursed him because he saw him? Right, you know, right. Like, Maybe. And then I just really never, never gathered. Mm-hmm. You know, I really just mm-hmm. never gathered mm-hmm. what it meant because I always had questions about, mm-hmm. okay, he just saw him. So right. why, did, why did he do that? And I said, well, maybe back in those days, he wasn't supposed to see his daddy naked. Well, that mm-hmm. was one. That, that was true. true. That was true. There was a reason why. There was a reason why. But you even think of the innocence, questions. the innocence of, you know, a little girl. You know, mother wants to hurry up. Hey, come on, baby. Just jump in the shower with mama so we can go ahead and get cleaned up. And fathers do that with their little boys. Come on, son. Let's go ahead and get showered so you can go to bed. I can't never say I'll take In another day, it okay. might have been all right. But in this day and age, it's not good. And the bathtub with their child between their legs, and both of you have pieces. I, I always look on Facebook and I go, wow, you know, how does that feel to the child? Do you know that that's a, that's a devil out here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That baby yeah. not yeah. stupid. You know what that is. Right. 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 He's sitting on a stool. Well, you learn fast anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Right. 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 That was such a good point because when I was a young girl, I remember I was at a funeral. Mm-hmm. And because I was little, I had to sit on a cousin lap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as a little girl, I felt all those mm-hmm. parts. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, mm-hmm. that, and I remember that. And I kind of like, hmm, I like how this feels. So, you know, that kind of planted a little seed in your mind. I was young, didn't, you know, innocent, didn't really know, but it was different than, this is this is good that you're bringing this up. Because yeah. a lot of times this is how that enemy yeah. open up. Yeah. We all have had those experiences. You know, I can remember when I used to sleep in the bedroom, in the bed, and they tell you don't put children in your bed after a certain age. Because certain things, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. certain spirits are in beds, right? Mm-hmm. That's where you're intimate. Yes. Well, I used to sleep right in the middle of Bill Johnson and Maddie Johnson. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, for the life of me, I thought, okay, now look at this, y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, parts, hand mm-hmm. parts. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm asleep, mm-hmm. but I'm feeling something at the back end of me, and it felt like a thumb, a finger. Mm-hmm. So I'm grabbing it, okay. and I'm doing this. I don't know what's happening, but then all of a sudden, I'm feeling something growing. growing. And because I'm a little kid, I don't know what's going on, but I remember this. So, yeah, Brad, God is like, yeah, baby, you sleep with us there. 
If you want to help them, you have to. It's like he says, seek wisdom. This is seeking wisdom to right. from God. Absolutely. There's something to take to them. Mm-hmm. And I, some people, I just give to them that I, I went to a store and I seen one and it, it, it irritated me so bad. And I just really had a little smile on. I said, I got to talk for you. And it's so funny because I got a book. Mm-hmm. And I can see him. He said, Thank I mean, you. as soon as I come in there, anyone's crazy. <laughs> I, I can see it. Mm-hmm. I don't care how here. much I don't care how much they try to cover it up. I can see it. Mm-hmm. And it's like you can see that spirit of mouth away. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You can. That arch dollars today, but the thirty five dollars over the internet. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the book is it, it completely turns them over, and you this way you don't have to say much. Just mm-hmm. like I got you a gift. Mm-hmm. Hey, but I got something for you. There you mm-hmm. go. Give it to them. Mm-hmm. Give a lot. Because that's what, when they come on to me and a lot of them come, I know what God is saying and do it. Ooh, what's up? I'll be like, you know what? I don't know why God sent you here. Follow you me go. to the car. <laughs> we shall write right them down. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got enough. You got enough. I'll be like, yep, yeah, I give them my book and a car. Here you, you go. go. Read this book. And they call, uh, did you read the book? No, nah, why you didn't read the book yet? I was trying to find out more about you. Read the book. The book will tell you all about me. My name called back. I started getting it to the preachers, and I had preachers call and say, um, you know, I, I'm over here trembling. I have to immediately start praying because it called out hidden spirits that are there. Yes. Mm-hmm. It has really, really caused out hidden spirits, a lot of the sexual demons. But when it comes to this spirit, it's going to be hard to minister to them. Mm-hmm. But it's good that they're here to hear to know how to prevent. Right. They know homosexual when they see homosexual. Yes, they, do. Mm-hmm. they know what not to do. They know which way that she know what to do mm-hmm. when she sees somebody dressed uh, like um, a young man that got big old titties. Mm-hmm. They feel like they're men. You right. know, Tall stuff. You know? Mm-hmm. Or, or huge. I, I, I just, I've always wanted to know this. Mm-hmm. So, when I, like, drive down the street, whatever case may be, and I see the young, and I'm like, that's a girl. Mm-hmm. But it's like she has, yeah. she's taped yeah. herself yeah. down, and then you're like, but, okay, so she's holding hands with another girl. Okay, okay, I get this. Okay, I see, I see what's going on. But if you don't want to be with a man, why well, are you, you with a man? Like like yes. Because yeah. it's a spirit of confusion. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You, you're confused mm-hmm. from the job. You, you, even if it was two women, you're mm-hmm. still confused. But it's a, it's a deceptive spirit. Mm-hmm. You, you don't know. I, the women, the drag queens, they take their stuff up. Yeah. You know, and literally, same tape, great tape. As Fix they self up all they want, but when you pull it off, they get taped. That's how deceptive Satan has them, that they walk around and the pieces they have is just amazing. Mm-hmm. It's just perversion. Yeah. Satan trying to pervert the natural And then, God. Um, what's his name coming out? Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner. I'm sorry. Caitlin. Caitlin. No, that's him. Bruce, 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 Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jenner. His name is, yeah, Bruce Jenner. Jenner. But he now, Caitlin or whatever it is, um, that has really opened up a portal. Oh, right. Wow. So many young kids and yeah, young uh, uh, people coming out. I am Jenner. I'm so glad Jenner. I am Jenner. 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 Yeah, I am Jenner. That's the kind of stuff that they But no, they got a young use. show too. They have a um, I am a teenage a, a teenage show uh-huh. for um for kids that's coming mm-hmm. out and become not right. transgender. Right, just transgender, like teenagers. But see, when the devil allows something like that come up, somebody else, God raising somebody up too. Because I'm absolutely, that's what I was getting ready to say. What concerned me even more was, I love sports, but when the ESPYS gave him an award, bravery, bravery, yeah, bravery, and I'm like, no, not not the sports, you know, not the athletes. No, you guys are not giving him an. 
mm-hmm. award, you know, for quote unquote brave, bravery. Brave enough, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. But see, the but thing is, the version of the world who's dead don't even think about it. Right. Right. Our president, president gave a license to do That is brave. I mean, it is brave to do what he did, if you think about it. You got to be very brave to do some stuff like that. I guess like what that. confused me, and I thought about, once again, children, what does that have to do with athletics? He was a decathlon, yeah. Yeah, right, he was a decathlon. Right, but him, was. him doing what he did, what does that have to do with athletics? No, because he was an athlete. That's why he was a Christian. He was a Christian belief on the world. The Bible told you the world is going to be the world. And so they're going to do it. And that is bravery for a big old tall man. They didn't get 10 people that are more like a man. Still walk like a man. Yeah, I don't understand why I'm so surprised. That you was that homosexuals are not happy. No. And you said because um everybody goes into somebody that So is it the fact that they're not happy because they're not accepted or Well you're not happy for one, you're living a delusional life. Sal. It's delusional. For two, you tried to get out of it. One point in time you tried to get out of it. What happens is the homosexuality reprobate mind comes out of result of not being able to know how to get out. Mm-hmm. See, it's something you try to get out. Nobody, and I noticed that when they start putting the rainbows up on Facebook, mm-hmm. I noticed that, and I saved a couple of them to show you, Miss Leo, how they mm-hmm. were saying, why y'all putting rainbow flags on y'all stuff? And y'all know we don't really want to be like this. You know, we didn't want to do this. We try our best not to stay in this lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Because the, God is going to continue to go after you. He's going to continue to try to, you know, turn you over. He's going to continue to send people to turn their back on you. They're going to turn away, and you're going to have to deal with that. That's the misery. Uh-huh. Everywhere so, I go, you don't like me? So what happened when someone tried to present truth to you? Did you... Yeah, I did the same thing. I, I, if you got two wrong, you hit in the face. <laughs> but, like, sometimes, you know, too, like, I noticed that, because um, my nephew who's like that, one of the things that he say is, you know, he's a hairstylist also. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that he says is when you get in his chair, you can't talk politics and you can't talk religion. Not at all. That's the spirit of the mm-hmm. enemy. That's the mm-hmm. biggest trick that he has put out ever, if you ask me. You can fight over stepping over the shoe. They'll shoot you over a quarter, but you talk about religion mm-hmm. or Jesus mm-hmm. uh, or um, your corrupted um, government system, and he wants you to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, we can argue over. Jane, we can argue over you messed up my hair. You you sit there, you have con- sitting at that chair, you can conversate about any and everything. Mm-hmm. In my chair, we're going to talk about politics mm-hmm. and Christ, or should I say, Christ and politics? Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to talk about. So, you, so when he say that, then is it the fact that he don't want to hear any? Is, mm-hmm. is he afraid he's going to hear something? Mm-hmm. He's going to hear No, no, no the, en- the, the enemy is the enemy is shut that door already. Mm-hmm. So you can't open that door like that. <coughs> So what happened if I present a book to him like that? That's your, that's, that's you? That will that will do it because it's not you. Mm. It's not you presenting it to him. You're giving him a gift uh, from sent from God to deal with what he's dealing with mm. from an authentic point of view. Mm. I come from what they feel. I've been through the book says exactly what you're asking. Mm. I've been through all of that. But when you come off and you're going to come off like this, and I'm going to feel offended already because the devil put that block up in me. Mm-hmm. Before you come, I can look at how you're looking at me. Um, mm-hmm. And when you come in, you're like, right. right. See, like, even like for me, I'm the pretty much the only Christian in my family, but I'm the only one he'll talk to, too. Oh, you got to bow. Right. So, right. I mean, he'll pick up the phone and call me before he calls me. Did you hear what you just said? You got to do it. One of the things that he said is that he don't want to talk. Because we've had, they That's were right. down here, That's him right. and his partner was down here a few weeks ago. We had him over for dinner and we, I treated him the way I've always treated him. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, because, I mean. Yeah, I call like this. All my cousins do. So when he calls you, what is the conversation? It's not like, that. Like, no, it's usually not, it's not that. If that. he's getting ready to make a, a decision about anything, he call me. Mm-hmm. You know, like if he's um, just pretty much like, you know, because his mom, which is my sister, have lupus and she's sick, and he'll call me and say, oh, you think you can give her a call and stuff like that. Okay. You know, so okay. we, and, and the thing about it is, too, I think the last time 
we actually discussed Christianity. Mm -hmm. He told me that then he was talking about something, and he came out. And he said that he don't believe that there's a hell. That's right. And I asked myself, well, do you believe that there's a heaven? And he just said, um, he said, yeah. I said, well, do you know that usually there's always a good, there's always a bad, there's always a light, there's always a darkness. I said, so how would we counteract heaven? I said, how would we counteract that? And he just said, I don't know. It's getting how, confusing. How old is he? It's getting confused. Mm -hmm. he's, he's like, I, don't, I just want to share something with you real quick. How old is he? He's 29. 29. So he's very analytical. In the 20s, you're very analytical. You're a thinker, and you think you know everything. There's a thing that's called bill break bill. Bill break bill. If I want to really talk to you about something negative that's an issue, first thing I'm going to do is tell you how great I think you are, how much I love you, how proud I am of you. And then, because now your emotions are building, building, building. And you're, you're, but what it's doing is opening your heart, it's opening your ear, and you're receptive. And then I'm going to say, but you know what? That's when I'm going to hit the break. Right? Now for you, again, like my man said, you have to dwell with him according to knowledge and wisdom. And you have to pray for discernment and timing. Because if he's your assignment, and I say that for this reason, my son, my, my second oldest son, he's not my assignment. Although I pray for him, I talk to him, I give him wisdom. And that was something I wanted to ask my nephew. Because when I'm talking to Lil Vincent, one thing I demand, Lil Vincent, I know you're grown, you know I love you, I respect you, but I'm your dad. Watch your language talking to me. Mm -hmm. And he straightened it up like that. But Lil Vincent's cut from a different cloth. Mm -hmm. I put him on it. I don't put me on it. Mm -hmm. I said, he's your assignment from now on. So I turned him over to him. Mm -hmm. Because he's younger, he's close to his age, he can reach him in places I can't. He's a daddy's baby. I can't reach him like he can. So now he's you're, not a gay guy. No, but he's he's but he's, he's one of the ones I was telling about. A uh, roughneck, 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 thug. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. And he, he's an Amy. But so you got to know from how, a call. You got to ha you have to come at them at a measure where it's not judging. Mm -hmm. You have to come at them. It's not a conversation about their lifestyle. You have to come at them, and I I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. Because the devil already has set up a block. You're not ready to beat the devil. Only Christ can do that. Mm -hmm. And God is love. So you're going to do it with love, but it's going to be significant love. It's not going to be no easy love. They're used to all of their schemes. They hear this everywhere they go. Everybody is trying to ease up and tell them how their lifestyle is right. Mm -hmm. So they're already used to that. But what helps people like that is when they find other people that is compatible. Somebody who's already been through what uh, they've been through. One thing about Little Victor, even though I was the lifestyle, I lived the household of us. And so I'm able to come and I get on whatever level. When I see them and they say, oh, nigga, you this old nigga. No, you're not. Don't call me that. Mm -hmm. They be like, dang, you crazy. Say, girl, you crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, and they like that stuff. Or when the homosexual club, don't give me that stuff. No, don't you give me that stuff. I'll oh, child quit it. You quit it. Mm -hmm. You know, you, yes, come, you have to meet them at the level that they're at. Mm -hmm. Now, I ain't really talking about this. I'm not talking about this. I get that a lot. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh, what do you got to say? Oh, Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. I got something to say. Lord told me to tell you he loved you. Oh, you know, that's the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that opens their heart. Mm -hmm. No, you got something you want to say. True. <laughs> You go to church so that you don't gotta you don't gotta talk to them about their lifestyle. Go around it. They know what you're trying to do anyway. Mm -hmm. They already know what you're trying to say. They're well aware of what you're trying to get to them. They've heard it everywhere they went. That's why they're unhappy. Because mm -hmm. they know what you're gonna say. You know, but he, I, but, you know, just like um she was saying about her friend, he always appeared to be so happy. And like with um you know, like with my nephew, there's no struggles because when it comes to doing hair financially, he's set. You know, so he has, it seems like everything just falls in place for him. It will because God is going to do something with him. He's going to remove that spirit sooner or later. But right now, he's at a level where he's learning some other things so he can help develop other areas. He may be living his testimony. He's going to be created, um, creative in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. And that's actually what I was um, sharing with Leola um, yesterday is that. A lot of the homosexual relationships, I know it's deception, I know it is, but the way that it's portrayed in the world, 
like he's better than a heterosexual. They got more money, they work together more. Nice. I mean, they got driving better cars. Well, look for work, I mean, baby. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot of trinkets. I, I mean, seri yeah. seriously, but in the world, when they look at this, they looking like, oh, well, you know, they, they doing good. It looks like they're prospering. It looks like... Well, they are because, for one, the one thing about Christians that we do, we forget the part of work there. And they get up and they don't believe in the God that you believe in like that, so they go after it. They go notice I said when I was fourteen I seen everybody turn their back on me. I went and got two jobs. By the time I was eighteen or sixteen I was working at bank downtown. By the time I was eighteen I was working at South Bank. Nineteen I was a teacher. <laughs> Make it work. Why not? Yeah, but you had eighty nine credits when you graduated. Because I went to school because I needed to go make some money. I want to be um I want to make sure that everybody gets refreshed because as we can see, we're bringing it to a close. We have people that are having to leave. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wanted to just make sure that if you wanted a book and wanted his signature on it, and I believe God's going to be taking him some places, you all can be able to say, well, you have a resource and you have an actual person that you know you have made a connection with that you can make some contact with at any time that you, know, you have someone that you feel as though you're not capable or you feel a little bit nervous about conveying information or if you just want to ask what should you do and, and pray that God will you know give you the answer um, either he give it to you himself or either Apostle Anthony can help you out with those areas but I just want to make sure that everybody felt um, that you had a lot of questions answered and that anything else that you would like to say comment questions or whatever that you feel free to do that at this time if not then um if everybody is ready to, to go ahead and enjoy their refreshments, we can go ahead and do that too. And certainly, I do appreciate you all for coming tonight. It's been such a blessing. And I will make sure that we get that audio equipment available for you all. You, um, I mean, I think I'm I got a swipe. You got a swipe? Okay, all right. All right, I'm just going to shut this I got a swipe because nephew goes on my face. Listen, ma'am, can you remember a 